in our midst. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are. Wave your hands to Jesus wherever you are. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We honor you. We exalt you. Father, let tonight be a night of opening. Let it be a night of entrance. Let it be a night of openings in the Spirit. Can you speak in the language of the Spirit? Thank you, Holy Spirit. bless his name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There is no one.
give you praise. Father, we honor you. Father, we exalt you. We bring you to authority even in our midst. We declare your power and your presence established in every situation. Thank you for everything you've done. In Jesus' precious mighty name, amen. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. For prophets, we always need the spirit to be able to say what we have to say. Okay, so every time we come, we need a certain atmosphere to share what we have to share. Well, today we are speaking on glorification, which has to do with um, the end of our teachings on salvation. And I mentioned to you that this teaching is so necessary because if we do not understand what this glorification is all about, we'll miss a lot of opportunities in how we live our lives. And one of the things we need to understand is that, of course, we're talking about different vocabularies of salvation. We mentioned, uh, I can't remember what we mentioned, origination. Yes, help me. The what? The decree of God. The what? Predestination. What? Righteousness. Yes, help me. Election. Uh-huh. Yeah, if you are lost, please go and listen to the tape. Vocabulary of salvation one, vocabulary of salvation two. And people are getting testimonies online. I put, I put, there's an online person, I don't know, sent, sent us a testimony on an email address that they started speaking in tongues when they were listening to New Beginnings 1 and 2. Like that's we're watching the tape, the Holy Ghost gave the Holy Ghost baptism. So if you're not here, if you're here, you don't speak in tongues, go and watch one of the tapes. God will, God will minister to you. Amen. Uh, so what it tells you is that a lot of things are happening online. You don't need prophet to touch you all the time. Some of the things you can get it on the tape and your testimony will be sure. Amen. All right. Then we also came to the dimensions of remission, Ephesians, last week, right? Now remember that. Yes. All right. Um, I didn't get the time to touch on reden- re- regeneration, adoption, sanctification, and glorification. All right. So I just mentioned them in summary. So that when you read the Bible and you see the word regeneration, of course, in Titus 3, 5, and Matthew chapter 19. Matthew 19 calls the regeneration the next age. Jesus said, in the regeneration, angels will not marry. So he calls the next age regeneration. In Matthew chapter 19. But in Titus 3, 5, it speaks about not of works of righteousness that we, should, we have done according to his mercy. He has saved us by worship of regeneration and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. The word regeneration is actually the process where sons are made. So anytime you see regeneration in the Bible, it means that is how sons are made. The sons of God are made by the process of regeneration. But in the word adoption, let me focus a little bit on adoption before I continue. The word adoption is not civil adoption. You know, you've gone to many ministries and many churches where people go like, ah, we are not connected to God. God, we were like orphans and God came to adapt us. That's not what Bible adoption is. Biblical adoption is not that you are not related to God. Please hear me. In the time Christ or the time Paul was writing the word adoption, the word is um, heotesia. Now, in the time Paul was writing this, there was a culture that happened at their time. The young man grows to age 12 and goes to the temple and goes through the process called bar mitzvah. And at bar mitzvah, he is accepted as a man. And in being accepted as a man, we don't realize something also happens. In the acceptance as a man, he is also accepted as the, as the rightful adopted son. So in those times, you can give birth to 20 sons. All your sons have to prove themselves sons at the time of their testing. You see, right now we don't test sons. But in those times, they test sonship. So you, a father actually adapts his own son. So let, let, me, let me just even bring it back to something mundane. If you've watched 300 Spartans, before a king becomes a king, he's thrown as a boy into the bush. Remember that story? And he has to return a warrior before he's made king. That's how adoption was. So by the time you return from every training, you are now accepted as a rightful son. That's how biblical adoption is. So biblical adoption is not civil adoption where you are not related to a person and you are adopted. No. In biblical adoption, you are related to the person, but it is actually called the placing of sons. Regeneration is the making of sons. Adoption is the placing of sons. When sons take their place, that's adoption. 
So anytime you see the word adoption, 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 it is God placing his hands. If you can take the echo out, I'll be happy. So it is God adopting or putting his hands in their rightful position. Nevertheless, when it comes to adoption, I'll not go too much there. Probably when we get to foundation school, you can listen to that tip. I'll teach it. It's different from maturity. So adoption is not maturity. When you talk about adoption, you see, every time you think about God, think about God like this. God has the legal document before the experiential environment. So anytime God is doing something, know that that thing you are come to do, there's a legal aspect. There is what you are made before what you experience. Amen? Praise the Lord. Let me give you an example. Sanctification. Sanctification is the making of holiness or the experience of holiness. Jesus said, for their sakes I sanctify myself. Does that mean Jesus was sinning? Jesus said, for their sakes I sanctify myself. That's what he said in John 17 when he was praying. For thy sakes, O Lord, I sanctify myself. Does that mean Jesus was sinning? No. The word sanctification actually means, he said, for their sakes I sanctify myself. That they also might be sanctified through the truth. So was Jesus sinning at this time? Sanctification has nothing to do with sin. Sanctification, I've shared with you many times, actually has to do with being set apart. It's being set apart. So according to hermeneutics, the first law of mention says that it was a day that was sanctified. A day was set apart for God's use. So sanctification means that you are set apart for God's usage. That's sanctification. For instance, some of you are on Christmas, you are going to what? Use special dishes you don't use all through the year. It means those dishes, dishes, whatever they are, are being sanctified. You set apart for a special day. That's what sanctification is all about. Amen. So Christian sanctification means that you are set apart for only God. No one can use you except God. Hey. All right. Whatever that word use means, think about it. Amen. <laughs> this generation, you can't preach in peace. Every word is polluted. Every word. So Jesus was not sinning, so he can't say he sanctified himself. Number two, let me just put it this way. Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26 says that he shall cleanse it and sanctify it by the washing of water, which is the word of God. How do you remember that? And I gave you a simple process of washing. That when you take deter any detergent to wash, soap, whatever it is, and you're washing, what you do is you pour soap into the water with the garment that is dirty, isn't it? Now, cleansing power of the soap is, it takes away, in fact, if you've done a little chemistry, you understand that the soap bonds with certain chemicals and certain, what you call dirt is a chemical. So it bonds with it and pulls it out as a compound, out of the dress. So that bonding process is what we call cleansing. How do you understand what I'm talking about? So taking dirt away from the garment is cleansing. It's not sanctification. But sanctification is actually when the scent the fabric now contains the chemical from the soap. So now after you wash, when you take the garment and you smell it, it smells like Ariel. smells like, what, uh, what, what other thing? Radar, so clean, whatever it is. Omo, whatever it is. It, bingo, is it bingo or bing? Bingo, bingo, whatever. So as soon as you take it and you can decipher what kind of detergent you use, that new smell on the garment is what we call sanctification. It is, so... Cleansing is taken away. Sanctification is adding to. So when God asks himself, you are sanctified. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul says, holy brethren, Hebrews chapter 3, partakers of the heavenly calling. Because God has added himself to us, he calls it holy. Once God is in you, you are holy. I said you are holy. I said you are holy. But obviously, whilst Hebrews is talking about holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, that is position. Peter is saying, be ye holy for I'm holy experience. This is where a lot of Christians get lost. You can't say we are already holy. No, we are already holy, positionally. You can't say we are already seated. No, we are already seated. You can't say I'm more than a conqueror. No, we are already more than a conqueror. But we fight daily to enforce what we already are. That's why I keep telling you, Christianity is becoming what you have already been made. That's Christianity. So you are not, I'm not giving so I'll be blessed. I'm a blessed man giving to express my blessings. Hey, somebody here. You must know your place. 
The greatest problem in life is identity crisis. If you know who you are, you know where you are coming from, it changes everything about your life. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. But finally, glorification. Say glorification. Now, this is where we enter into the realness of our proper reason for being on the earth. And, and time is so short. So, what I'm going to touch on overcome is I'm not going to do line by line explanation. It's a crash course. Amen. It's a crash course. I'm going to show you what to overcome. So, the next week, when I explain to you that we'll all not be the same in heaven, you can understand what I'm talking about. Do you know in heaven we'll not be the same? Hey. It will not all be the same. And that's why you need to understand the principle of overcomers. And you need to understand what this heavenly civilization is all about. You understand why you have to keep yourself. You understand why you have to do a lot of things you are doing. Because there must be an end to this. Amen. Unless there's no heaven. If there's no heaven, then fine. But at least I lived a good life. Yeah. No, is it a saver to live right and die and there's no heaven and hell? Down to joke. And when the thing opens, you realize that. Ah! And now I know when he's going to die. That foolish reincarnation nonsense is not going to happen. That you were once a tree on a mountain. <laughs> you will see your pepper where it is. You will see that you are really a tree. You, you will be that thing for the rest of your eternity. Yeah. So don't joke about the things we are teaching here. It's, it's not a joke. So I was showing my father what I was come to share. He said, hey, Prefesos, boy, you are giving them things. I said, Lord, I hope they are understanding that I'm feeding them. I'm trying my best. I'm bringing Bible school things to you. So that you don't know. It's like the church has been babyish for a long time. Because some of the things you don't understand. Bible says, this, this thing I'm coming to preach, don't be scared. Hey, tell your neighbor, don't be scared. Some people are beginning to say, hmm, Abraboe, Abraboe. I've not even started the message, you are tensed. Tell your neighbor, relax. It's going to be good for you. Amen? Praise the Lord. Can I tell you something? Anytime you hear his voice, harden not your heart. That implies that God is giving you an opportunity to restart. Are you understanding? Anytime you hear his word, it's telling you that God is saying you have an opportunity to restart. That's why you are hearing what you are hearing at the time you are hearing it. So anytime you hear a word that, ah, you should have lived this way, don't say, ah, wasted time. No, God is saying that now. Start again. That's why you are here. Because some people will never hear this. Some people will never get this chance. So you are hearing something. Amen? Praise the Lord. Glorification is the ish. Say it's the ish. Because we are... <laughs> Man, I'm becoming too modern. Eh? <laughs> Try my best. Now, the point is, the Bible says in Ephesians, if I, I quoted it last week, Psalm 8 verse 1. Psalm 8 verse 1. There is a realm higher than God. Eh, sorry, higher than heavens in God. And there's a place called glory. And Bible says that for them that he did for new, he did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. Then he says, those that are, what do you call it? He called, he predestinated. And those that he predestinated, he justified. And them that he justified, he sanctified. And those who are sanctified, he now glorified. So the end of the transaction is in glorification. It is in the state where we enter glory. He says, our Lord, O Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens? God didn't call us to heaven. He called us to glory. Can I repeat it? God didn't call us to heaven. Your final destination is not heaven. Heaven's civilization is not located at a place. I'm coming. So when I'm teaching you about heavenly civilization, I'm not teaching you that we are going to live a certain way there. Jesus said in John 3, 13, he says that even the son of man, which is in heaven, and he was talking to Nicodemus on earth, trying to tell Nicodemus that wherever the sun goes, heaven is. Mm. He said, no man has ascended up into heaven. But, you know, of course, this one, people get argument about it. The word ascended here is ascended with his own power. No one went to heaven by themselves. Elijah didn't go by himself. He was caught up. He was taken. That's what scripture says. Elijah was taken. Enoch, he was not found because God took him. But this one, the word ascended here, Jesus himself went there without anyone taking him. That's the word ascended here. That's why he said no man. So next time you read the Bible, go like, ah, why did Jesus say no man? Yet Elijah and Enoch went. It means that the word is in the verb. Check what the verb means. It means someone didn't go by himself. 
So you see the word, you, you see anastasis, you see the words there. So you realize that there is one that there is a force that is used to pluck the person. The church will not be taken. They will not be go to heaven by themselves. You have to be taken. Rapture. It's only Jesus who can enter heaven and come back by himself. He doesn't have to be taken because he is the heaven. Praise the Lord. Are you here? All right. So our glorification is the end of our story. Bible says in 1 Peter 5.10, what does it say? The Lord who shall establish us, uh-huh. 1 Peter 5, and the God of all grace hath called us unto his eternal glory by Jesus Christ. So God has called us to a place called eternal glory. We are not called to heaven. We are called to a place called eternal glory. And don't get lost. Let's go to John chapter 17, the verse number 5. John 17, 5. What does it say? He says, and now, O Father, glorify what? Let's read together. One to go. One. And now, glory me with thy, with the, so he says, glorify thou me with your own self. That glory. So it means God's own self is the glory. That's why it is higher than heaven. Because where was God when he said, let there be heaven and earth? And for God to stay in any house means the house is greater than him. Then whoever put him in that house is greater than God. But the God we serve was not made by any man. He is self-existent. What it means to say is that there is no house composite or capable enough to house God. So the only place God can stay is a place called himself. And that's what scripture says, glory. Can I tell you something? Jesus said something to the disciples. That I'm going to the father and I'll come back for you. Isn't it amazing Jesus didn't say, I'm going to heaven. He said, so that where I am, you will be also. So if he says, I'm going to the Father, it means where he is, is the Father, not heaven. Bo, 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 can we read together? Yes. Want to go? Uh Uh-huh. There is no record Jesus said I'm going to heaven. No record. Hmm. I'm determined to change that religious mindset. Because some of you don't know heaven will be nicer. Oh my God. If you, next week I know when I'm done. You go like Jesus, come tomorrow. Come tomorrow. You understand? You wish he comes tomorrow. And some people are still nervous. It tells you a lot. Don't worry. <laughs> For my father is greater than I. Then Jesus said in John 14, the same John 14 from the beginning, in my father's house are many mansions. If it was not so, I will not tell you. I go to prepare a place. And his house is called glory. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's just, let's guess, guess, guess into what we want to say. Now, so then glorification is where the Bible says, is sown as weak yet raised in strength. Is sown immortal, incorruptible, uh, corruptible, but is sown incorruptible in 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 40. He begins to talk to us about our glorification. That we are going to enter a dimension where we enter hyperspatial, hyperdimensional body. Our body does not need a room to be confined. And I'll touch on that next week. Praise the Lord. And that is our glorification. Because there is coming a day, the way God is and how Jesus was able to enter the Father. How did he enter the Father? He told them, a spirit has no flesh and bone. And Adam said to Eve, you are now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. Let me say this as a caveat to all single guys. Any woman you choose is actually the picture of your essence. (laughs) Also, for that is why if you choose at the wrong time, it's just a matter of years, you regret what you chose. I 
plead with you. Whatever is genuine and true requires time. It requires time. God will be on Saturday I'm meeting every single person married, um, planning to marry, eunuchs. Even if you don't want to marry, you are coming. I need, yeah, yeah. If like, we'll count, through. I told you, in marriage school, four misses, I'll sack you. And if I sack you, if you tell me you want to date, you have to enroll. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to be sitting. I can't be giving advice that I've been giving over the time in a class. Yes, I suppose something. I know, Elizabeth. I so when we sit in the class, if I want to tell four people about communication, all of you are hearing the same thing at the same time. So I have peace of mind. If like, don't come. And if you're not coming to, there must be a very proper reason. Ha, uh-huh. Pastor, where is that, Pastor Eva? Say, hey, that's him. Say your proper reason to you. know how your principal is very strict. Are they sending the assignment? I've been seeing the assignment. I heard somebody came out for the page. I heard somebody join the marriage page, the family life. And after how many seconds? 30 seconds or something. In two minutes, he, uh, he deleted himself. So I, Mr. Evans asked him why. He said, ah, I thought it was just mingling. <laughs> He said, I didn't know it's a class. He said, assignment has come. He said, he said, I want to be serious before I join. Yeah. Yeah. You know why we are doing this? Because Satan has set an arrow against the church to disgrace people's marriages. So we too will counter it with revelation. We will teach you before you say I do. So that whilst we are dating after six months, you realize that this is how marriage looks like. Brother, I can't date you again. It's better you break up than come and divorce. Because divorce is like plucking a part of your body out. It's not a joke. This generation too don't know how to stay in covenant. After two years, two years, I'm tired. Let's break. Are you, are you in a relationship? Oh? You'll be calling for divorce. You'll be shocked that any person you see, Satan will tell you, wake up. You're a suspect. That, that, you'll be shocked. Everyone you see, what shows that you last? You will never be comfortable. You will always be alert. Because this one too can end. I'm telling you. Am I staring somebody to make sure you don't, especially if you are single here, you have a great opportunity. Like all the married people and all the people who are, have gone ahead my door will look at you and say, I wish I was you. Yeah. Anna? Okay, yeah, some people have wives are here, so they don't want to say amen. Because the wife will ask them in the house, what do you mean by that amen you said? Are you trying to say, sir? Why a mistake, Anna? So I'm saying the question, Obia, you're stiff. In their head, they're like, ah! <laughs> I would have done further tests to investigate what I'm about to enter. Yeah. So please, Saturday, I'm meeting you 12 noon. Make sure you are here. If you can't come and you are part of the, and if you are here, you've also not registered, be aware. Eh? Be aware that anything that happens to you maritally, relationshiply, be I will ask you, are you in family life? If you say no, I'll say, I have nothing to tell you. Join the school. Join the school. Catch up. You have to do remedial class. Catch up. Even, you know, I dated my wife. It was when I proposed that I, I told her, I said, I said, my dear, I want to marry you. That's how I proposed. I didn't propose, um, I love you. Can we try and see? Nonsense. No. Then you two, you were a girl saying, ah, <laughs> you are happy. I said, no. I came to marry you. So my proposal, no, no. Forget the world. I'm going to preach a message today. Overcome it. A lot of worldliness has entered the church. And they did rose and they knelt down and they brought a ring out. Echo saying. Have you not seen when you break up? Nobody comes to show how they were collecting the ring. It's the one they gave you that you showed us. The petals and the balloon. Worldliness has gripped the church. And the ladies here telling novella love. Adrian, they want a chiseled guy tall with beard. You, 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 as a lady, you, 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 you are eating at midnight. You, 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 you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, I ended today. You want a six pack man, sister, be six pack too. Let's six pack meat. What do you think? If you want a six pack man, I said bone of my bone wall, flesh of my flesh. So if you are six pack, meet us with six pack. You can't come with one pack and say you want a six pack man. What, what do you mean by that? I'm not looking at anybody's face. 
Not dialing. I'm looking at the floor. <laughs> Amen. Pastor, that's it. Because I remember very well. And I'll show you guys how to communicate. Because if you are trying to know a lady, I miss you is not part of the statement. No, no, no. I'm serious. Can I tell you something? This is, this is what causes the problems. Sir. Because people don't realize that words can change feeling. So the moment you say, I miss you, I miss you, I miss you, you are blinding steady. So what I should use to see, I miss you, is clouding it. Then when we start dating and we are fighting, we don't understand. Because when I should have said I miss you, it was not time. Now, friendship level, you are saying I miss you. Then when you start dating, what do you want to do? What do, do I press you? Let me preach my message. Hmm. Hmm. The women are uh, ironing board. The men are pressing iron. You, you are pressing. Because when you, when you, it is in the, it, I, 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 what are you talking about? Because if all the sisters in the church are all your sisters in the Lord, then I miss you must cut across board. And I don't say who dates here. It's boring. In two person over here. What than the iron? Then the lady too is an ironing board. The relationship is boring. May the Lord deliver this generation. I'm preaching overcomers. If I follow you, tell me that I didn't close early. Let me close my message and go back. Oh, say overcomers. <laughs> uh, Jesus Christ. Oh, I'm telling you. I'm on the wall. Of you. Because God has shown me what is coming in five years. He said, if you don't prepare your people, you won't sleep. You need to have to sleep. Because I don't have much time to sleep. Yeah, I'm first, I went to, I went, I had to meet somebody at one o'clock, had some meetings. But I had to be with my father and the Lord. So I left the house around eight. He said, we'll go home at almost two o'clock. Quickly shower and come back. That's how I'm coming here like this. But when you go to your father and the Lord, do you say, Daddy, I'm going? <laughs> you stand there till they release you. That's how, that's how, yeah. Because it's Anna. I have to stand there. I don't know what I'm going to preach. I'll wait for you to release me. So I said, Daddy, I'm going to say, wait for me. I said, I'll wait. Wait for the car back. That's how I'm coming to preach to you here. Say the overcomers. And this glorification is a serious matter. What it simply means is this. In other words, glory is actually the original state and function that a thing was intended to be and do. So glorification means that what God had originally intended from the principle of origination, predestination, for knowledge, for uh, what do you call it? For ordination, election. What God decreed, glorification is the end of it. A people in a certain class that do things a certain way, that look a certain way, is a Christ in you to whom God will show what is the mystery of these riches among the Gentiles. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1.27. So that hope of glory is the glorification. The end of the story is glory. I said the end of the story is glory. I said the end of the story is glory. Hallelujah. All right. So we are talking about the overcomers. The overcomers. Now it's so important that we understand from that terminology what the overcomers mean. And let me, let me, let me take us on a journey. I, I started by saying this last week that John had words he uses. For instance, when you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 21. Can we show it? 1 John 20, 20, um, 4, 21. All right. Can we read together? Okay. 1 John 3, verse 23. Let's go there too. 1 John 3, 23. Can we read again? Now, I'm quoting this because if you read 1 John a lot or John's epistles, you hear the word commandment, commandment, commandment many times. But the Christian has a way of taking things by de facto. The moment you see commandment, you are thinking of the Ten Commandments. But Paul just, John just showed it. He said, this is the commandment. That we should believe on Jesus Christ and love one another. Why? John 13, 34, the same John who wrote 1 John. Quoted the commandments. What did he say? A new commandment. John 13, verse 
John 13, quickly. Let's 34. He said, what? A new commandment I give you. That's what? Ye love one another. As what? So John is using the word commandment in regards to believing in Jesus Christ and loving one another. So anytime you read John's writings and he uses the word commandment, he's not talking about ten commandments. So he says if you break the commandment, this is what he's talking about. That you don't love one another. It's a break of the commandment. That you don't believe in Jesus Christ. In John's contextual interpretation, it is the break of the commandment which is loving Jesus, uh, believing in Jesus Christ, and also loving one another. Revelation 20. Can we go there? Revelation 20. Please follow what I'm saying very seriously to help you. Verse 13. Revelation 20, 13. Revelation 20, 13. God has released the prophetic word for 2021. Hey, 22, sorry. Yeah. And I can say it. It's on record. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Should I say it? Yeah. So you prepare yourself. He said 2022 is the year of the mystery of godliness. <laughs> so next year is the mystery of godliness. I will show you something. Say the mystery of godliness. Are dealing me at tires. We are in exciting times. We will display the godliness of God. I said, We'll display the godliness of God. Somebody's not excited. I said, We'll display the godliness of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sisters, please, this relationship thing, take it serious. It's on my heart. Now, recently, one of my daughters told me something. I was so blessed. He said, man, he says, Daddy, many guys are asking me out. But when they ask me out, this is what I tell them. Are you ready to meet my pastor? I was proud of her. Because any man with any serious mind will come and see your pastor. Yeah. Tell him. Can I give you another advice? Anybody who tells you this one, don't tell prophet. You should know that action. No, that action to end in tears. Yeah, don't tell prophet. Don't let anyone know. That action is, is an action of darkness. Satan is in it. Or oh, I can say it by authority. Satan is in it. You are safe, oh. When she said I was, I didn't tell her, but I was so proud of her that you said that. And one man told her that, ah, pastor, I don't, he said, ah, then you're not serious if you're not ready. Because the point is that if you don't realize that your pastor is your defense, your pastor can practice or polyandry or polygamy. <laughs> I can't have 70 wives. So there's no way when I say that no to this guy because I want to marry you. Who be be me? me so only me person me dent here. Because if I say yes, marry this guy, me, I won't sleep. You will call me at midnight that they have thrown you out of the house. Then you put me in a complex situation where I should come and mediate, but I can't, I can't. So I'm helping you now. What is here? Let's meet our pastor. Let's meet our, our pastor. And some would date here. One I'm saying, I'm a friend. Hey, how far? What can say? That did not. We are sure. No, I should be able to ask you that question at any time. Have you kissed recently? Has your hands touched on Clinton's? Yeah. 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 I said, need that. Let me pray for you. And I'll give you an announcement. For the next six months, don't visit her again. <laughs> yes. No, so you are safe. So we both marry and they kiss, they fondled. Then as soon as the preaching is coming, that goes like your foundation was wrong. No, I cry. See, kissing. Ah, kissing yourself foundation. We can't. I'm live, international preacher. I'm an international preacher. I have to comport myself. Hallelujah. Praise God, God, God of Mary. Do you like the message I'm preaching? Yeah, it's blessing your life. Amen. It's here that I become a pastor. When I go outside, I'm very serious. Usually, I'm straight to the point like that. Yeah, yeah, usually. Amen. No, Revelation 20, I want to show you something about a people that were set to have entered hell. And, oh, why is the scripture vanished from my Bible? <laughs> appear, oh Lord, appear. Bring that. No, the scripture talks about how liars will also be thrown into the fire. Where is that? 
Verse what? The verse what? It's 20 what? Oh, 20 verse 18. Okay, okay. Okay, go. there. All right. What did I say? Verse 18. Okay, okay. Go there. All right. What did I say? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. No, can we read together? The people are reading is I'm not liking it. Okay. It says, all what? All liars shall what? How they will have their part in the lake of fire. And this is where a lot of people get thrown off and go like, ah, then we are going to hell. But can we go to what John meant by a liar? Let's see what John meant by a liar. Because if you look at the things, you're like, ah, fearful, okay, unbelieving, they were not saved, abominable, all right, murderers, yeah, of course, whoremongers, by all means, sorcerers, magicians, you must go, idolaters, those who worship idols, true, liar. It's like the things that have been mentioned, liar is too extreme. Like, what did we do? Just a simple, I was under pressure. <laughs> That's why I lied. Like, I'll, I'll go to hell. Hey! So me and the murderer, we are the same. <laughs> yeah, That's not what it means. Can we go to, hallelujah, say I know the truth, and the truth is making me free. All right, so 1 John chapter 2, verse 22. All right. If you notice, I'm intentionally reading every scripture for you because the things I'm saying are quite different from the, what, what we've been hearing normally. So I want you to see in the Bible that this one, prophet is not speaking his mind. It's in the Bible. First John 2, 22. Yes, can we read together? One to go. Aha! Uh -huh. That is why this person will be in hell. Because they have denied Jesus is Christ. Someone said we are free. <laughs> you are free indeed. Hallelujah. You are not going to hell again. Hey, so all along you are going to hell. After the preaching on righteousness, you have been suspecting your salvation. You are going to heaven. Amen. <laughs> so I'm going to heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Now, when we get to the heavenly civilization, I explain to you what the principle of the Holy Spirit is in your life. He is the engagement ring. So anyone who has the Holy Spirit is going to be raptured. Yes, means God has engaged you. So once you have the Holy Ghost, you are going to be raptured. I said what? Once you have the Holy Ghost, you are going to be raptured. Once you have the Holy Ghost, you have been sealed unto the day. The Holy Ghost is the engagement ring. Praise the Lord. So having said this, what did John mean when he said overcomer? Because you need to understand what John's definition of overcomer is. He said it in Revelation 2 and 3. So what does John define an overcomer to be? So he can help us to be able to know what he's talking about, then we can put ourselves in the right frame of mind to understand this definition. First John chapter 4, verse 4. Let's go there quickly. First John 4, 4. Yeah. Ye have God, little children, and have what? Overcome them. Because, uh-huh. Now, so clearly from this scripture, you know that you have not been defined. Overcomer has not been defined yet. So you go on further. I'm sure you have to do Bible study. Go on further to the place where an overcomer is defined. First John 5, 4. That's where an overcomer is defined. One to go. Four. So the overcomer is the one born of God. <laughs> Someone's like, ah, prophet, so that's it. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> it's the truth. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. So it means that statutorily, John is saying that once you are born again, you are a qualified overcomer. No, don't get, don't, I told you from the start that God starts from, from, from position before experience. The position is that once you are born again, it means that, beloved, what, when we say overcomers, it's not a choice few. Can I put it this way? To even operate in sonship and the operations of God is by choice. It's by choice, truly. And actually, everything that concerns God, that is positional, 
is founded on choice. I'll preach a message to you. And it's quite ironic, the heading, the limitations of the unlimited one. How can the unlimited God have limitations? I'll preach that message. I can give you a cue. It's called free will. And I'll touch on it next week. There is something that can stop God in anything you do. Your choice. If you say you don't want, God can't stop you. Oh, I'm telling you. That's why even when God wants to heal you, he needs you to want it. You won't force healing on you. So people go like, ah, if there's God, why is he letting bad things happen? If the people don't know, they must call him. He will not show up. He said, call on me and I will answer. So if you don't call, there's no answer. He will not force himself. Hey, you can be sinking like Peter and Jesus will be watching you sinking. Now, ask me this question, sir. If Peter is sinking, obviously he is Lord. He knew he would sink. That's why a lot of people go like, ah, now if God knows all things, why is he letting me pray? God knew Peter would sink, but he didn't stop him from sinking. Because perhaps Peter wanted to sink. Because even Jesus didn't tell Peter to come. The transaction started from will, so it must end in will. Hey, Peter said, if it is you, Lord, let me come. He said, come. So God couldn't stop him from looking wrongly because it was his will, and God allowed him into his will. So when Peter started working and used his will to look elsewhere, Jesus couldn't stop his gaze. And of course, if it is sinking, it means Jesus saw that about three centimeters of water was climbing his ankle. He had seen the process, but was watching him. So the same Peter used his will to ask for help. That's why the Bible used the term, which was timeous, immediately. It means immediately means that it was in response to his cry. Not in response to his sinking. That's why you can be a Christian. You'll be sinking. If you don't say, help me, Lord, you will sink to the end. Oh, I'm smart. When I feel the thing is too much, I say, Lord, help. I'm way to. I not the thing gets too much. Help. I don't assume God will help me. I'll call upon him. I called upon his name long before my troubles came. You see, so I call, help me, Lord. So before trouble shows up, I've already called him. You know how I do that? It means I'm telling God, Lord, lead me in the path of righteousness. Anything that will destroy me, take away. That is calling before trouble showed up. It's called dedication. I dedicate my way that, Lord, any accident that will... So you are going to tell God that, Lord, when I travel, any travel that will kill me, don't let me go. I've called on his name long before. Long before. Long before, long before, I talk, say, I'll show you a prayer to pray. Singles, you have prayers to pray. Married people, you have prayers to pray. Some married people don't know how to pray. Father, change my mind. <laughs> because for sometimes eh, your wife's stubbornness is your stubbornness. If you be honest with God, you realize that you are stubborn. That's why your wife is replaced. It's headship operation. You, you are not following head. You want head to follow you. It doesn't work like that. So sometimes, yeah, God will tell you that follow me, she will line up. Simple cry. One of the prayers you pray as a single person, Father, if she is not the one, if he is not the one, don't let her say I do. So it means that if it's even 24 hours to that time, you've called on his name long before. So if it's not God's will and it breaks up, your prayer will tell you that it broke up because it is not my will. This one you made a mistake. It will break up. It's called covenantal prayer. Those prayers are the prayers you pray. If it's not your will. Ha! Ah. So many people are like, ah! I should have prayed that long ago. My God. But the Lord has mercy. <laughs> we will pray certain prayers on Saturday. And we'll let certain prayers all night. So I thought that relationship... Family life is fiscal meeting once, Zoom meeting once. So don't miss this meeting. Amen? We'll try our best to do some telecast for those who are registered. So it's only those who registered, though, please. Amen? You have special class. The, the married people have to teach you some things. Some of you are too raw. It's not good. You have to be romantic. No, some husbands are not romantic. After marriage, you are still raw. What's that? Romantic small. Amen? Some days ago, my husband showed me something. He said, do you remember this? I said, I don't remember. I said, ah, the first flower I bought for me. I said, ah, 
Flower. He said, yeah. I said, wow. He said, that's the water that it was in. I said, is that so? So I bought it for you. He said, yeah. I said, ah, I thought you don't like flowers like that because, so I told you I like to have a garden. I said, oh, is that so? so? Quickly, I went to buy flower. I bought a bouquet of flowers for my wife on her birthday. When she came, she was jumping. I said, ah, we'll buy flowers. <laughs> is, it, is it flowers? <laughs> my God. We are coming to buy flowers. It's just flower. I was excited. My God. Oh. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, family life, you enjoy life. Family life was a team. Family life was a team. You will have heaven on earth. You will not have hell on earth. Every marriage that looks like hell, by the power of God and by the revelation of scriptures, will turn it to heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he that is born of God is an overcomer. It means that in God's mind, there aren't select few to be overcomers. Every child of God starts his Christian life as an overcomer. But the choices they make is what determines the end. That's why we'll be given an account. Because if we were not qualified to be overcomers, then there's no point God asking of us why we wasted things. Can I say this to you? Life is a privilege. And everything connected to life is a commodity you must trade well with. A lot of you take life for granted. So it's leaving you that you realize that, hey, have you ever been sick before? Hmm. You don't have energy for Instagram. YouTube is annoying. You realize that the only thing you want to do is to breathe. You want to have appetite. You want to feel strong when you walk. At that stage is where you realize the important things of life. You want family around you. So it tells you that after you go through that, sir, I said to you some time ago, that experience does not make you an expert. Otherwise, after all the things you've gone through, you should have been an expert. You didn't let learning from experience is what makes you expert. So it means that when you are sick, learn that there are more important things than food. There are more important things than party. There are more important things than being at everybody's wedding. There are more important things than looking nice. There are more, yeah, I'm saying, when you are not well, you don't want to do makeup. Oh. Your mind is not even happy. Some days ago, I saw my daughter put on a statue. I want bicycle and motorbike. I said, you have eaten. I, I say you have it. If we're fasting, it won't be on status. Sometimes I see some of you on status. I just don't want to send you texts. I'll throw you a mighty bomb. I, I just said, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I was doing something. I just sent it. I said, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> when I tell you, I said, bomb, <laughs> advise yourself. Advise yourself. Amen. <laughs> you have eaten. Oh. Because you see, you all don't, all of us don't realize this. That life is a serious commodity. The weak, the sick, the invalid, the crippled, they wish they had what we have. It's going to be a travesty of life to get to heaven and realize that the thing you were taking for granted was a commodity you should have used to trade. You should have traded well. So we start our Christian life, or God called us into a place of being overcomers. Say I'm an overcomer. God made me an overcomer. Hallelujah. Amen. So in understanding this word, the word overcome here, in the Greek is the word nikao. And it has two meanings. It has a military meaning and an athletic meaning. Military meaning means one that is able to conquer. It's the same word you get for more than conquer. So the word overcomer is a conqueror. One that enters victory. Nikao. And it's the same word used for an athletic adventure. The winner of the race is called an overcomer. So Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, verse 25, go there, 1 Corinthians 9, 25. Now it says, in a race, 1 Corinthians 9, 25, all right, every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we are an incorruptible crown. Verse 26, I therefore so run. Uh -huh. Okay, so go back to 24. 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race, Run all. 
but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. So what he's trying to say is this, that the overcomers isn't selected for the one who starts or, uh, uh, let me put it this way, the one who wins the race is not the one who is selected as overcomer per se. What is actually ideal is that when we all kneel down on the track, we all have the same chance to win. We are. So whether I had a false start, whether I ran in someone's lane, those are the nitty gritties that happened. Like our dear brother who went to fight Mani Pakal. I remember that brother. Yeah, he said he went to eat. He said before I fought the fight, that I wanted to eat banku. So I tell my wife, say, you should go and do banku. And she put a lot of kamwe in it in America. Kamwe. Oh, fight. You, no. So you, he said he ate kamwe. So something happened to him. So when I stand there with the boss king, <laughs> and Paka was, br- br- he was just defending Trump. Up to date. It's a meme on YouTube. It's a big disgrace. He threw, he, I mean, uh, Pakal could throw 50 punches, he threw two. Like literally. Because of Kanwe. <laughs> and you could see he was not knocked out. He endured punches. And it tells you that the times that he even threw it, he shook the guy. It means if he decided to fight, he would have won. That's how it is. Oh, sorry. So we are running. But something else is running. So as you are kneeling down on your mats, before they shoot the gun, you tell the guy, I want to use the washroom. <laughs> it's late. That's how overcomers are. So God has designed that all of us will be overcomers. But unfortunately, a lot of us don't realize what we've been called into. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2. Hebrews 12 2. No, Hebrews 12 1. Let's go there. He said, wherefore, seeing that we are what encompassed with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and sing that doth easily beset us and run the race, not before your friend, not before your pastor, before you. So you're sitting there, you have a race in front of you. And he says that everyone that runs a race, runs so that they will win. Can I give you an example? It's like going to university. And when we entered the university, we all entered as secondary school people. Qualification, SSC, blah, blah, blah. We entered a course. We all started with a clean sheet. Isn't it? Now somebody brought their SS life where they can joke and come and study for end of exam. They forgot that SSC information is not university information. So you brought that same trick here and you were not getting the grace you want to get. But excuse me to say, silly for you, you didn't realize that you are in a new department, in a new study, and you must change the way you learn. So you are still maintaining the old way. Third year, fourth year, Charlie, I don't understand. The course is hard. It's not hard. The method by which you learn must be changed. One of the things I learned quickly in university life, when I even finished and I was doing my postgraduate, I learned one simple thing. The fastest way to learn your notes as a university student is to read whatever you learned in the lecture on the day. That's all. It's stuck. But we can't finish to close lecture. And fold book like SS hooligans and put it at the back of Abba Charlie very close. Then you go to a place called Akuzi Spot. Yeah. Or SMS Fufu. Yeah. Man, man say, who buy Fufu? He say, ah, pam, pam, pam. You have finished eating goat meat. Your hand is smelling. And you have gone to lie down and say, brother, <laughs> life is sweet. You will forget everything you heard, even if you are smart. But you'll be shocked the day you are come to revise. Strangely enough, the brain is programmed in such a way that after encountering information, when the information is read within 24 hours, it sticks 50 times more. That's why the next time is exams time is the last time, is the first time you are opening that part of the notebook. So you go and open that part of the notebook, you realize that, ah, when did he say this? Hey! So you're under pressure all of it because you are, the pressure is that, it's not like the, it's, no, the point, let me, can you, say, you know, there's a way you go like, ah, this course is just one notebook. <laughs> so you're like, oh, 24 hours, you should finish up. Then you open the thing and realize that the things you are seeing <laughs> is the first time. 
and you need to cram it. You see, it's easier when you know it already and you are refreshing your mind. But when you are learning new information, the chances are that what you already know will be put into dormant mode. That's why it's dangerous to learn new things at the entrance of an exam hall. Even the one you know is at dormant mode. Brother, sister, what you learned, what you learned. <laughs> Go and fail with confidence. <laughs> Just enter. You're like, Lord, all I know is what I know. I come in peace. Don't, don't because what you, there's nothing as painful as getting wrong information. You are replacing it to the one you learned. And when you are writing the exam, you realize that what you learned didn't come. It is what you learned that is here. But unfortunately, you have pushed that you learned into dormant mode. So you are not answering 100% efficiency. You are answering at 20%. Hey! I remember something like this. I remember something like this. Then that's why you begin to deceive us. So he said, photosynthesis is the process whereby um, carbohydrate is transferred. There's a leaf, there's a green sunlight. You are just remembering keywords because that's what they told you. When the keywords show up, they will mark you. You will see your lecturer call you. That's how you are defining something like sunlight, green, water, photosynthesis, spores, stomata. That's it. They will send you a text. <laughs> Who defines like that? Praise the Lord. And this is what happens to us. All of us are destined to be overcomers. In God's mind, it's the same thing with salvation. God wishes that all men be saved. But what separates salvation is choice. If you go to heaven, it's a choice. If you go to hell, it's a choice. If you will be an overcomer, it's a choice. If you will be a defeated Christian, it's a choice. How do I know this? The story of our dear brother Lot, righteous Lot, and his uncle Abraham. They were both called, even though Lot was a, a, a hijacked company, God still did not prevent him from being blessed. Because the covenant is that anyone connected to Abraham must be blessed. So whilst Abraham was increasing in cattle and livestock, he also was increasing. Then he said, this is our land. Choose what you want. It was Lot's choice that left him with nothing. It was not God who drew him there. It was Lot's choice. That's why many times, eh, people go like, man of God, so these things you are preaching, why are not many pastors preaching? You see, this kind of preaching, if you are not living it yourself, you can't preach it. Ah, you can't preach it to overcome the will of God. Now you, now you know you are defeated. How are you going to, you can't preach it. Also. There are some messages when you preach, you know you are condemning yourself. You won't touch it. So I'm telling you something because this actually is the mandate. It is the, it's the strength of our conviction. When they go to me and say, if anybody comes to you as a son or daughter and you tell them to leave you, you miss a crown. That was the last time people would do nonsense I'll say, I'm done. I can't be done. I'm Adam. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's Bass. Bass, I'm rapping, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Are you here with me? What I'm trying to tell you is that the opportunity for all of us to be overcomers is here. But today, I'm going to show you what to overcome. I'm going to show you what to do because the Bible says in the next verse, verse 25, 25, quickly, 25. He says, every man that strives for mastery is temperate. The word temperate is controlled. In fact, it's the same word that is used for the wise virgins. They learned how to keep their emotions. I told you, your greatest enemy is your emotions. If you can overcome your emotions, you are gone. In the military, they don't train you to be a good shot. They train you to kill your emotions. So in the military, do you know what they do? There's a night called boxing night. They will choose best friends. Oh yeah, they'll let you fight your best friend. And even like stand in the ring and don't throw a punch. You see your instructor enter. They will beat the two of you. So your own friend is standing there and you are throwing and bloody in his nose. Because you are being trained not to hesitate. Because in the military also, when you go for an expedition and somebody is disobeying order, you have the right to kill that guy and come and defend. Yes! And come and defend that he, he put all of us under risk. So we killed him. Simple cry. So you lose that heart of emotions. And you also train to do things as a unit. So when you are like you are in a hurry, uh, parade time, and you run, pop, 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 you stood first. You will jog till Jesus comes. No, 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 no. If one is late, all are late. So you make sure that all of you are moving at the parade to the parade at the same time. Somebody's oversleeping, you make him up, tell us go. Because if one is late, all of us will do 
push-ups. We'll do whatever we have to do. We'll do suicides. We'll do everything to money. The next time we'll learn to go as a unit. It's a serious matter. So somebody will misbehave and everybody in the academy will suffer for it. So we learn to be one. We learn to be each other's keepers. You can't fool here. No, you learn to lose emotions. I'm telling you. I was told of a story of a lady who was in a car with a taxi driver, an elderly man. And she was, she had come on as the attention. She was going back to academy around 10 p.m. or so because sometimes they give you six hour break. So they tell you um, 12 o'clock you are free or 6 p.m. or 5 p.m. are free. Be back by 11 p.m. So wherever you are going, you have to make sure that by 11. And you don't come 11 one. <laughs> you have to come well before that 11. So this girl was coming and this taxi driver was sleeping. A lady. A young girl in her 20s. In this taxi driver in his 50s. The lady slapped him from behind. Power! <laughs> because before he slapped him, he asked him, Dada, what that? He said, I'm a member man. Power! And the man began to walk. You know there's a way they can slap you. You don't have words. <laughs> he looked and said, Men are <laughs> He said, You are sleeping. You will kill me. Yeah. If it was a normal lady, she would say, hey, She would be screaming. Yeah. But she has been trained to lose emotions and feelings. Her first response is slap. Power! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah! No, 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 no. You're going to beat a military woman. Papa! Jesus Christ. They teach them how to slap. You know, there's a fluid in your ear that helps with balancing. Once you imbalance it, you are gone. So they don't slap you on the cheek, they slap you on the ear. Go and ask Deontay Wada. <laughs> when they break it and this, you lose balance. Who's on that we'll call left? <laughs> the Lord is calling you unto salvation. You'll be moving in a. <laughs> Like circle trotro, you know the way the car, the steer is like this way. The car is coming like that. Like, hey, where is the car going? The, the, the body is here, but the ties are here. Slap you, you say you are moving in the wrong direction. Every man that striving for man is why they do this to obtain a cup. So even you symbol, he said, because they want to be masters, they control themselves. I heard in Olympic, what, what, what? You don't have sex. Yeah, no, you are not for tournament. I'm going to have this. You are going to waste your energy. Keep it, brother. Put all your anger in their sports. When you win, you come and celebrate. Yeah, so in the camp, they don't, they don't allow for that. You can be sacked. Because yeah, you talk, your energy is finished. World champion, power. I tell you, I'm doing today. I air jog. You have lost breath, my friend. He said, even these people do it for a corruptible crown, a common gold medal. They control themselves. They don't eat everything. There's one young man that I like so much. Unfortunately, you have to sack that coach. Yeah. Yes. Eshak Bakba. Ole. Ole. He's disgracing my boy. He said, Cristiano is almost 37. People retire at 34. He is running faster than his. 20 year olds. He's running faster because he doesn't eat certain foods. He has no tattoo. He doesn't drink alcohol because he wants to be at a prime age. So that when 40 is retiring, you understand? Yeah. It's the way his body is. That's how you do it. So at the end of the day, there are other people who also have the choice of saying, oh, after a match, I can drink a beer. After a match, I can eat beggar. And they don't understand that it's cumulative. After a while, you'll be struggling to run. You are affecting your own heart. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Yeah, it's a serious matter. Ronaldinho was one of the best. Ronaldinho, Gaucho, Pereira. Ah! <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Let me preach my message. Where people are passing, it's not good. It's not good. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Are we here together? So we need to understand that for us to strive for the mastery means that, beloved, can I say this to you? The Christian life is not a human life. 
So you can't do things like a normal human being expect you to live normal Christian. It don't work. Can I tell you? Whilst others are sleeping in the normal human life, in Christian life we pray. Whilst others are eating anywhere, anytime, Christian life we don't eat everywhere. The Holy Ghost constrains you. Whilst others can date, kiss, do everything, have sex, test the waters, test the engine, you cannot do it as a child of God. Your own is different because you see, the moment you come into Christ, what you are standing against is Satan. If you do it like unbelievers, he will kill you faster than them. Because your terms are different. You are sealed and you strayed. Oh, he will spare you. Amen? Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 2, verse chapter 2. Let's go there quickly. Now, there's a story of Jesus Christ that came to seven churches. Now, these seven churches, the Bible says, were in a place called Asia Minor, present day Turkey. Present day Turkey. Now, the seven churches, the Bible says, were dip, typified by seven stars, which were held in the hand of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1, you see there. And Revelation 2 also. He introduces himself as the one holding the seven stars in his right hand. Now, these seven stars are all are called the Pleiades, what Job 38 calls. They are Pleiades, seven stars. And the Pleiades are found on the cosmic belt of a place called Taurus. Taurus the bull. So when you go to um, bullish and bearish stock exchange, who does stock here? Who does stock, stock, stock? Don't do, okay, you know about it. There's something called bull, a bullish year and a bearish year. Now, the bullish year is, you know, the bearish year is also, you know, but the bull is usually represented by what we call Taurus, the Taurus. And Taurus actually is actually an, a zodiac sign. If you didn't know, every economic transaction has something to do with the cosmics. Hey. No, I don't know why Christians want to be rich by the way the world gets to be rich. But they are not doing the demonic things the world do. And God said, as a child of God, do it God's way. That one you say you won't. Because every day you are talking about giving, giving, giving. It's on to you. We will see, we'll see where you end up at. No, I'm telling you. No one, I, I shared in, I, what, what meeting? I went to a certain meeting I was sharing with them. I think a financial conference some, some months ago. And I shared with them that, sir, no one gets to a certain level of wealth with normal activity. Either they engage God at a certain level or they engage some demons at a certain level. There's a certain level of wealth and blessing. It doesn't come on the surface. You must engage a spiritual entity to help you. And so when we talk about all this, I'm not even going to preach about this. Let me go into my message. So what happened was this, that they were named seven stars and in regards to the play ideas. But strangely enough, these seven churches was at the base of a mountain called Taurus in Turkey. That's why they were chosen, to explain something in the spirit. Then when he was explaining the seven churches, he was explaining the terms and the revelation concerning what must be overcome. Now, I'm not doing an exegetical teaching. Exegetical teaching means I'm preaching verse by verse. I'm preaching on what it takes to overcome in every church. So we add all together and know these are the things God requires of me to be an overcomer. Because he says, what I say to one church, I say to all the churches. What, he said, what, let him now have ear, verse, verse 7, hear what the Spirit says to the other churches. So it means what he's saying to one church is applicable to the other churches. Amen. Now he speaks about the first church called Ephesus. Say Ephesus. Now this is not the Ephesus we are named after. We are named after the Ephesus in Acts chapter 19. Are you understanding? Now in Acts chapter 19, there is a city of Ephesus. And the Bible says in that city, the word of God prevailed. But prior to the prevailing of the word of God, there was turmoil. There was fight. There was contention. There was activities of hell. And God took over the city and made it his training center. So the Bible says in the school of Tyrannos, Paul taught daily. And that was the place he said to um, Silas, Timothy, Titus, do thyself well to come to me at Ephesus. Because Paul's Bible school was at Ephesus. So the foundation of Ephesus is the city of Ephesus so the mighty word of God prevail. So Ephesus is a training church. Ephesus is a what? So everything you are hearing is training. If you go back to your notes, you realize that, hey, 
I can preach in any church. It's a heavy message. It's a training. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you taking what I'm saying seriously? But this Ephesus is talking about, the word is loosened desire. Loosened desire. Ephesus in Revelation chapter 2. And this church was in Asia. This is not a church that Paul went to around Jerusalem. This, this church is in Asia. And then when Paul, sorry, when John was writing to this church, he wrote to the pastor of the church and the pastor was called a messenger. Now follow me very, I'm going to say something, some, some very profound things that will help you. Okay, if you've heard me preach on overcomers before last year, this is not like that. So follow me. This one, I'm going to stick to something very interesting. And he says, these things said he that holds the seven chairs starts in his right hand and he that walketh in the midst of the golden candlesticks. Next verse, next verse, verse two. I know thy works. I know thy labor and I know thy patience. One of the things you are going to notice in all these words of the overcomers is I know your works. It means this has nothing to do with salvation. Revelations 2 and 8. Go there. Revelations 2 8. Let me show you again. To the church of Angel of Spina. Right. Uh-huh. Verse 9. I know thy works. So it kind of streams through all the churches. I know thy works. I know thy works. Because he's not talking about salvation, which is by grace. He's talking about positioning, which is by works. And like I said, sir, if you go to a university and we're all matriculated as first years, not all of us will have an award at the end. But we all graduated. So as saints, we will all graduate into heaven. But not all of us will have rewards. But let me even give you a simple picture. Notice that you started with first class. And your GP was 3.8 or something. Then all of a sudden it was reducing. Then by second year, a certain foolish boy came in your life. And he halved your GPA to 2. So you realize that also by the time they are doing graduation, they are calling valedictorian, best in mass, best in accounts. You know that friend who caught it. They were under you. So you look at the thing and say, ah, the first order will come, that foolish boy. If it wasn't for him, like I'm collecting a word. So it tells you that if on earth there's a certain semblance of discomfort. You see, there are a group of people, excuse me to say, if you are here, don't worry. But, uh, amen. I, uh, can I preach my message? Yeah, there are some people, they finish with pass. They were excited, like, that they are finished. No, have you ever gone to the notice board? Somebody got 94, and they were not happy. Those who are greedy, they are, they are called Mac, they are called Max Hogs. They like Max. If it's not 100, they are never happy. Somebody to go 51, they're like, whoa! Whoa! Woo! 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 I, don't give you peace, oh! Don't be poor! Woo! 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 And they'll be running, guy! Woo! Charlie! No true, no true. We break, we break! We, how much? 51. Ah. Yeah. That's how people enter heaven. They'll enter heaven, woo! Woo! I made it! Woo! Those SU president, I made it. Where are they? Hey. Woo! Say you know that. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. You. <laughs> That's also, so because you have to appear in heaven like, hey, I made it. It means they didn't believe the way things were going. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. So in on earth, we have semblances of this reality. If you knew what it means to fail and be a defeated believer, the picture, go and meditate on it, is Lot. Lot, I shared with you when we were doing rites of righteousness, was still righteous when he was leaving Sodom. But he had lost everything. He couldn't even stay in the house. He had to stay in a cave. It's a serious matter. So, you see, Bible does not tell us his emotional state, but you, you should imagine. It was so miserable and disgraceful for him. He couldn't even go back to his uncle Abraham. It was bad. That's a picture of an earthly experience. How much more that which is in heaven, which is amplified, amplified joy, amplified pain. Don't, don't joke with this, you know. Don't say, oh, say, of course, I'll make it to heaven. You'll be shocked. I'll show you. Bible says eh, some people will weep and gnash their teeth. And their weeping and gnashing of teeth is so intense, it's only Jesus that can stop it. Bible says in Revelation 7, and the Lord will come and wipe out the tears. If he has not stopped you from weeping, you will never stop. 
So what I'm preaching today, I told you from the beginning, to be an overcomer is a choice. It's not any special selection. It's a choice. You have a choice to make today. Every day God tells me, say, Adam, you are destined to be on a throne. Make sure you make it. Make sure you make it. Because he has made us to sit together with him, isn't it? But do you know in Revelations, one of the churches says, he that overcome it, I'll make him sit with me. So we have all been qualified to sit, but not everybody will make it to sit with the Lord. When I, when I preach on the heavenly civilization, I will show you how these people become presidents and rulers of nations. Whilst the others will be learning what they should have learned on earth. One day someone went to heaven and he opened a book in the library of God. God has a library. Do you know God has a library? Can I show you? Every book you write that comes from the Holy Ghost came from God's library. Because as it is in heaven, so any book you write must be that which God released that. This is what is in our library. Release it on earth. Sorry, a book be an outro. There are seven ways to conquer devils. Hey, brother, if it's not in heaven, you'll miss the owner. You will meet the owner. And you'll be able to. Isaiah 30, 29 says, it is God who gives songs. So wherever you are getting a song that didn't come from God, you should know it's whoever gave it to you. That seduced the church. You'll meet the owner. Yeah, yeah, Isaiah. No, no, oh, you shall have a song as in the night. When the Holy Spirit, it is God who gives you the song. So God gives you the song. So if you are singing a song that didn't come from God, check it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Okay, coach. Heavenly civilization. I had there. Next week, I pray God will remind me so I'll show you how to even choose a spouse by heaven standards. Oh, don't choose anybody. Oh. One day, I went to a wedding. And as I was in the wedding, the Holy Ghost opened my eyes to see something. And when I saw what I saw, I saw that people were dancing in the room. And they were all dancing, excited. And I said, Lord, what is this? He said, this is the room of the heavenly marriages. And I asked God, what do you mean? He says, 80% of marriages on earth in the church are not my will. Now I was shocked. Now follow me well. Yeah, I was shocked. I was shocked. And I said, Lord, what do you mean by that? And God says... When I brought Eve to Adam, by the time Adam was choosing Eve, option was made available to a matured man. So you are giving options when you are working in maturity. Because you can choose as God will choose. Hmm. But when you are not in maturity yet, you are guided. Because you cannot choose by your standard of development. And I saw them dancing. And I ask God, what do you mean? He says, this will be them that will show and typify how Christ and the church look like. And he said, for that, they have a reward in heaven. Listen, everything you are doing here, is a reward. you're there waste time. When you see some of us, we are fasting. We are like, prophet, you are spiritual. It's not spiritual. There's a reward. If I, don't, if I don't do it, today like this, God told me you are starting a fast again. When we close, I was starting my life. We're driving. I say, hey, coffee broke, man. Mm. She said, honey, you're hungry. She said, anytime I'm hungry, roasted plantain ground, it looks nice. I don't usually buy food on the road. I don't do it. I don't. I've dialed your number. Stop it. <laughs> Child of God, you'll be there. Bukina. Famil Knutown, Stanley Mami. Child of God. Control yourself. Self control. Fura. Is it Fura or Fula? Some people call it Fura. Others call it Fula. Child of God. No, let me say, sometimes say, hey. Today I wanted to close it. No, don't worry. Listen, do you know something? <laughs> there are certain things you realize as you go on in your Christian walk. Eh? If you overcome that, you are training yourself to overcome certain things. Sometimes it's not that God says eating in a car or eating the rosa is bad. Though. It is the ability to delay gratification. It's the ability to hold on to the appropriate place. That simple act has taught you something to hold your appetite when it even comes to ladies. Because some of you, you are as holy as the opportunity that has not come. 
When the Burkina shows, when Fura shows up, we'll see your display. No, I was in work. I was working in government. And the Holy Ghost said, I will show you how people's appetites are at office. Workshop. When I was working, the government people are there. How are they? This is Sarah. Yeah, these are finance. These are ministers of finance people. Me, I was at health. So we go to Moving Peak. We go to Royal McDick. We go to different places. Kofori, Diato, the best hotels. And every lunch, when we had the Moving Peak, lunch, they'll bring, you know, Moving Peak food. It's tight. It's tough, man. Three coffee breaks. Croissant, jam roll, blah, blah, blah. And it's hot with natural juice. And I look at it, the Holy Ghost said, don't touch it. Man. I look at God, I said, Lord, what have I done? What have I done to deserve this? Do you know what the Holy Ghost said to me? He says, anytime I tell you not to touch food and you touch it, your greatest carnality expresses. And everybody here can testify. The day God said fast, you didn't fast. And you ate. The sins you did were like, oh! Wow! Wow! So it means that God was telling you to fast to prevent carnality. It is not a payment or a punishment. There is something he was preventing. And certain decisions that will cost you. So don't go down. Yeah. Moving pick croissant. Chocolate roll, whatever. Aye. Holy Ghost said, don't touch it. He says. To the extent my directors, some had diabetes. They will still touch it. I said, hey. Temptation is serious. Though. You know, there's a way you can see that. The person will come to sleep with a serpent. But the passion will like, no matter. After the serpent will pray. Hey, you know you're going to eat something that is sickly. Do you know sickly? Sickly. There's a difference between sugar and sickly. Sickly is the white one. Sickly. <laughs> very, very white. It's going to affect your diabetic level. But the desire to eat the thing overrides everything you are thinking. And after you eat it, you'll be lying in your bed and say, hey, I shouldn't have eaten it. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes some of the people come, some of the ladies come to say, hey, Adam is busy. Because the lunch free. You know, there's nothing as, there's nothing as, a, as, let me put it this way, slave mentality in Africa. Africans, excuse me, we are all Africans, I'm part, so don't think I'm being, uh, what do you call it, what do you call it, condescending or whatever it is. We like free things. Unless it's not free, we are there. That's why engagement and wedding and funeral. <laughs> A certain man of God told me a story. A man of God went to preach somewhere. They didn't give us honorary. I was very hungry. And we're coming from the program. And we saw a funeral heart. We just descended. <laughs> yeah, we just, so when he said, I say, E. So it means people who have come for funerals that they have done their first motom, they came to eat. They, they knew that is their lunch. Free. Sanla, a lot of you are looking for goat. Goat and cow. Christian. You'll be calling your friend, hey, how far? <laughs> no goat today. <laughs> no cow today. Wherever the car has gone to, you still want it. When you preach to you that car, where it has gone to? May the Lord deliver everyone. <laughs> Who has eaten? No, no, yeah. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Have you said that you give communion? Is it communion for fun? There's something in it. So don't think when they call you that we have Sanla goat, it's free. Something is happening. No, 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 don't just, hey, you are requesting, hello, how far with the cow? Have you killed it yet? Is there spice in it? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> we are calling for Sanla cow. But the point I'm trying to put across to you is that the moment you start building capacity, you can see death. You can see bread. And it's not sin to eat the bread, but it is sin to disobey God. And the sin is not actually that the bread is the sin. God says, if you can't obey me, you are off. So he will train you with mundane things, I'm telling you. There are times I wake up at dawn, I'm so angry. I'm not fasting. But as soon as I enter the fridge, I'm about to eat chocolate. Holy Ghost said, put it down. That's like, ah. I mean, who has chilled the Holy Ghost before? <laughs> Lift your hand. The Holy Ghost can give us a <laughs> Ah, Holy Ghost, cry. 
And sometimes you are tempted to hide it from him, <laughs> forgetting he is God. <laughs> yeah, I see you already. Amen. Can I, can I comport myself and preach my message? Like, I'm not comporting myself. Hallelujah. What's the time? It's <laughs> 30. Oh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I receive grace. All right. So he says, I know thy work. So I'm, I'm trying to communicate to you that what is happening here is it's not in reference to salvation. Salvation is grace, according to Titus 3, not by any man's works. So this has nothing to do with salvation. This has everything to do with reward. And that's where works come in. It has everything to do with reward. That's where works come in. That's where what? Works come in. That's why it says, I know thy works. Can we check 2 Thessalonians 1 verse 3? He says, I know thy works, thy tribulation, and go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, go back. All right, go back. Go back to Revelation 2, verse 2. I know thy works, thy labor, and thy patience. How thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say the apostles, and are not found, and hast found them liars. Now go back to 1 Thessalonians, it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 1, 3. It said, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, your labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. Now go back to Revelation 2, 2. I want to show you a couple of things that's happening here and what we must overcome. Now in Revelation chapter 2, verse 3, he now says that, Revelation 2, 3, and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Verse 4, verse 4, Verse 4. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Next, 5. Remember therefore from whence thou hast fallen and repent and do the first works, else I will come unto you quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. 6. He that, aha, uh -huh, okay, but thou hast hated the deeds of the nucle nucleotans, which I also hate. Yes, 7. But he, let him not an ear, Hear what the Spirit said to the churches. He, him that overcometh, I'll give him to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the priorities of God. Now, what God wants you to overcome here is you have left your first love. And I want to show you something very interesting because I, I quoted 1 Thessalonians 1 verse 3 to show you something. Now, notice it says in verse 2 of Revelations 2 that you have left, I know your works, your labor, and your patience. But in 1 Thessalonians 1, 3, he says that I know your what? Go back, 1 Thessalonians 1, verse 3. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith. So in Revelations 2, 2, he says, I know your works. The faith is not part again. I know your labor of, of your labor. But in 1 Thessalonians, they started with the labor of love. So they are laboring, but there's no love. They are doing works, but there's no faith. And they have patience, but it's not the patience of hope. This, this, this is the fruit of living your first life. I want to diagnose it. What it means is this. The picture that you have left, thank God he didn't say you have lost. He said you have left. It means whatever it was the last time, it's still there. He didn't say you have lost your first love. You have lost means you have to go and find it. You have left it means there's a location where your first love is waiting for you. Go back there. Please, are we here? Okay. And now this is very important because I need to emphasize this. What you need to overcome is the loss, the living of your first love. The living of your first love. And the first love is always characterized in this. A time comes in your Christian life. You are just doing the work of God, but there's no faith again. You are just showing up. There's no more faith. You are laboring, but there's no, the labor is not labor of love again. How do I know this? The story of Jacob tells us that because he loved Rachel, the, day, the years were but a few days. It means that the moment God's work, prayer, fasting, spiritual things become difficult for me, love has been lost. I'm laboring, but there's no love again. It's hard. It's hard to pray. It's hard to fast. It's, it's difficult. It's painful to give. Something has happened to my love. Because the labor is no more in love. Coming to church to pack chairs is work. Being a volunteer is burdensome. The love of your labor has been taken. And I told you that life is a privilege. Do you know that your greatest health is church health? You won't get it at work. 
vicious serpents of workplaces. <laughs> Even check that we are supposed to be repaired. There are serpents here. No, they are not here, but they are here. No, they are not here in this room, <laughs> but they are in the body of Christ. Yeah. So the moment you are praying is becoming laborious. A fellowship with God and it's, you want to leave. You want, to, you want the fellowship time to end. So you can go and take your phone, check a message, go on the news. Your love is gone. You are laboring, but there's no love in it. The moment you are not, you are impatiently patient, then your patience is not the patience of his hope. Why? Looking for the blessed hope. So it means that if you are patient, you are patient unto the coming of the Lord. You are not patient unto any miracle. So it's like you are impatiently waiting for your husband. No. Your patience should be geared towards Jesus' appearing. Every other thing should not get your impatience. Because if I'm patient enough for the Lord to show up, it means chances are that he might show up in my lifetime or I'll die without seeing But I love what Job said. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. That is the patience of hope. All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. That now becomes patience of hope. And, and John was saying that you have lost it. The picture that you have lost your first, the word first love there, the word first is the word protos. The word protos. It's the word protos. Now, every engineering person here will tell you that there's something called a prototype. You don't build anything without a prototype. There's, you do a miniature in the room drawing board before you move it to production. That prototype is the word, where you get the word, is the root, the root of it is called the word protos. First love, first, protos. The new one. The first of its kind. So he's saying that you have left your first love. Also, do you know this first love has nothing to do with anything that came from you? Let's go to First John chapter 4. I for love if I start preaching it. Next day, I'll go more into this dimension. Somebody has to bribe you to be angry when you enter love. Ha, ha, ha. Hallelujah. First John 4. Are we there? Arabasoma. Please speak in tongues. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Verse 7. First John 4, 7. Let's stay here for a while. First John 4, 7. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Remember, born of God is overcomer. So everyone that is an overcomer knows God. So you can put love it. You know, born of God is the same word for overcomer. So everyone that love it is overcomer. Hey. Are we together? Yeah. Love. Let us love. Then he now says in verse number 10, verse 10, verse 10, 1 John 4, 10, hearing is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son. So he's trying to tell you that love's definition is not you generating it. It's a response to what you have received from God. So the first love he's talking about is your intimate connection to the father. Your love that you are receiving from God. Not the love you have for God. Because you can't love God if he has not loved you. You can't what? Love God if he has not loved you. Go back to verse 7. There's something very interesting here. 1 John 4, 7. He says, agapetos agapomai. That's what the Greek says. Agapetos agapomai. Agapetos is the receiver of love. Agapomai is to love. Is the, anytime you see my in the Greek, it means it's a verb. My, M-A-I. Nine. A-I usually is a verb in the Greek. So agapetos agapomai, which means to say, we who have been loved, let us love. So it means you can't love if you have not been loved. That's the meaning of beloved. We who have received love, let us also love one another. So the way you can love somebody is by receiving love from God. Can I tell you today, if you don't know how to receive love from God, you can never give it. And Paul is saying, sorry, John is saying that if you don't overcome the tendency to lose your first love, you will miss being an overcomer. And a lot of you here, you are struggling with your passion for the Lord. It's not something you should go and stress yourself to do. 
it is actually lying down to receive. Please, are you here? So to overcome, according to what he's saying to Ephesus is, learn to receive God's love. Learn to receive. A lot of you don't know how to receive God's love. Learn to receive God's love. Learn to receive God's love. Can I show you? Can we, learn to receive God's love. Keep, keep reading. Keep reading. Keep reading. Verse 10. Verse 10. Verse 10. Now, the, the, receiving God's love. Verse 11. Verse 11. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. I told you, God does it, then we can do it. Verse 12. No man has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us, and love is perfected in us. I'll show you something. Verse 13. Hereby know we that we dwell in him, and he in us, because he has given unto us his spirit. Why? The Bible says in, Rev in Romans chapter 5, verse 5, Hope maketh not ashamed, for the love of God is spread, is transmitted abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. So he's saying that the moment I'm walking in this difficulty to love, something is happening to my overcoming capacity. Listen, I'm, I'm going to repeat to you. If you are beginning to lose your first love, you are missing out on being an overcomer. So it's a serious matter. How do you do it? Go back. He said you have left. Repent means come back to the height. So love is a height. Come back to the height. Come back to the height. And it's time to begin to feed on the Father's love. It's time to, how do you feed on the Father's love? The Bible said when this woman was forgiven, she loves much because she's forgiving much. The moment you begin to remember how much God, I said to you last week, our feces, the moment you remember how much God has forgiven you, a whole lot of things change about your love. Because you realize, ah, he has forgiven me. I can go freely. Oh, what manner of love has the Father bestowed on us? You know the word manner in 1 John 3, 1? What manner of love? The word manner there in the, in, the, in the Greek is the word foreign. It's alien. The literal says, what alien kind of love? It's not normal to humanity. That a man will die for you. Woo! Beloved, God says love is a receipt. You receive his love. If you don't receive his love, you can't love anybody. No man is capable of loving. Because the fruit of the spirit is love. So once you're not born again, forget love. You have human affection. You're not yet in love. Hey, I help somebody. Oh. Somebody comes here, I love you, I love you. When you know he's not born again, you know it's human affection. It can finish. It can finish. Because love is only shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost who is in our hearts. So he's trying to tell you that, listen, the way we love, sir, is receiving his love. The Bible even said in Ephesians 3.19 that to know the love of Christ, not the love for Christ. Now this thing I've taught you before, that's why I'm, I'm going like this. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that we might be what? Filled. So even the way you get filled with God is not prayer fasting. It's to know God's love for you. You must know he loves you. And you must meditate on these things. Go and sit down go like, ah, Jesus, you love me like that? He said, yes, I love you with an everlasting love. How wide is this love? From the east to the west. Go, 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 go to 19, 18. Go to 18. 18 says this. And go and meditate on this. That you may comprehend with all the saints what is the breath as far as the east is from the west. What is the length and everlasting love? According to Jeremiah 31. What is the depth? He left glory, condescended to humanity, and has not regained the external shape of God. He is man who ascended into Godhood. So there is one mediator between God and man. Jesus the man, not Jesus the God. He became a man and it cannot be reversed. Oh... In fact, it's not that it cannot be reversed. He decided not to reverse it. He kept his manliness in the Godhead. That's the depth of his love. And the depth was not just to come and die for you. He came into the lowest part of Hades to be mocked by evil spirits and was stripped naked. A king of glory. And you think that's no love. Greater love has no man that a man should lay down his life for his friend. Go and meditate on these things. I'm telling you, when you feed on it, it changes a whole lot of things because this is where scripture comes. Verse 16, verse 16, verse 16, verse 16. First John 4. No, first John 4, verse 16. Ah. I'm it's simple. This one is not long things. 
How do I get my first love back? Go and think about his love. For we have known and believed that God, he said, believe the love God has for us. God is love and they that dwell in love dwelleth in God and God in him. 17. He says, verse 17, you've gone to 18. Herein is our love made perfect. The word teleos is the word herein. The word teleos is also the word which means to bring to an end or to bring to a, to a specific goal. So you can read it this way. Herein or this is our love brought to the end of its goal. So it means the moment he uses herein is specific to verse 16. How does our love come to the end of his goal? When God pours his love in you, the goal of God pouring his love into you is so you pump it on someone else. So perfect love is the love that can love another. The day you come to the place where you can love somebody, no matter the evil they've done for you, your first love has activated. Can I tell you something? Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 30 that for this cause, because many have refused to discern the lost body. Many of you are weak, are sick, and are asleep. So what it means right now is this, sir. Paul is saying that because we didn't discern the lost body. Now, discern the lost body is two things. Eating the communion. How many remember that? I told you the blood. Jesus said this is the blood of my testament. But he didn't tell us what the body is. So, discerning what the body is for. Breaking of the body. Number two. The other part is understanding how the body of Christ looks like. So, if Jesus Christ is the head. And we, the church, are his body. It is an error to say I like Emmanuel's head, but I don't like his chest. Then we've not discerned the lost body. And Paul is saying that if we don't understand this, a lot of us will be sick forever. A lot of us will be weak forever. What does that mean? He's trying to say, if I say I love Jesus, then I must be able to love Jesus' chest. Then it means that if I love Jesus, his head and his body are the same. Then it means that, sir, the way I love Jesus as my Lord and head is the way I should love his hand like the head. So it means from today, I love my Christian brother the way I love Jesus. That is discerning the lost body. And that is walking in the first love and perfecting that love. The day I saw this, I ceased to be angry with people. Because if I know how much I'm forgiving, I know that nobody is worth. No, 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 no. God has forgiven you, Adam. Oh, God. Now you're like, oh, Adam, what, prophet, what did you do? Some women say you are beginning to think of sin. Listen, the, the sin issue is, I told you, creative powers, imaginative powers. See, when you think it has happened, no, I shared with you last time, I'm lying. You don't need to go and tell a lady I like you. Just begin to have bad thoughts about her. There's an energy you are throwing. Oh, yes. So if the person is not spiritual or prayerful, all of a sudden you begin to feel a certain unusual attraction to you because there's a thought you are thinking towards the person. You are creating it in the spirit. Hey. Please, I want to preach you. The way you are doing. Are you here? So he's telling me that. <laughs> oh my God. So he's telling me that in the spirit, sir, the moment I begin to walk in Christ's love for me, I must know that that love is the same intensity I give to a brother. Then I'm walking the first love. At this frequency, you can't argue with anybody. At this frequency, you can't. Because the point is, what you are doing here, you are fighting Jesus' body. But you are telling Jesus, I love you. This is the height of hypocrisy. When we say hypocrite, this is it. I love you, Jesus. <laughs> but this girl, uh, it's the height. Don't, don't joke with it. It's a serious matter. And I'm preaching, like, please don't, don't get this thing. Sometimes when I'm preaching this message, it's not because of, it's the Bible. I'm preaching the Bible. Otherwise, there should be another interpretation so that it's like I've chosen this one. You understand? <laughs> Can I preach a message? Yeah, that's it. That's the truth. First Peter 1 22. Show me now. First Peter 1 22. Oh, Dabi Yamasubaria Kabari and Telele. Ariangunomo Sana Chibo Shari Kamambori and Dala Bazeli. Aria Delebe Kibo Sibada Yabada Badadi. It's a sin that you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto a faint love of the brethren. See that love one another with a pure. The word pure. A pure heart fervently. The word pure is the word katharos or katharos. And 
In ancient Latin, this word katharos was actually what we call cathartic. I think it's a medical term. Catharsis. Ah, the removal of poison or uh, disease from your body. Cleansing. Catharsis. This, what he's trying to tell you is this. Love one another with a heart that is devoid of poison. You feel it. That's it. Now, next week, when I preach to you, you realize that everything you were faking to us, Jesus has recorded it. Oh, no, no, no. But nah. do, that, you see, that's my, that's my problem with religion. Religion makes you do a surface work. It does not make you do a spirit work. No, 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 no. It's a spirit work first, though. It's a, I'm te- it's a spirit work first. So that if I deal with this boy wrongly, in the spirit, something has happened. Even if nobody sees it, there's something in the spirit that has happened. And there are consequences to it. Yes, a pure heart. I'm pure towards everybody here. You can call my head big. You can say, prophet, I hate you. No problem. I'll love you. I'll love you. I'll love you. Love you. Yeah. You can be angry. I love you. Amen. Because I, I'm not love you because I like it. I'm love you because one day I'll stand before the owner and I can't have poison in my heart towards you. Ill heart. Ill heart. Oh, demand about Chopin like a body. That's that. One day, Bob Jones went to preach somewhere. And when he went to preach, Bob Jones said, after preaching, the power of God was mighty in the service. People were healed. People were falling apart. Healings were happening in the meeting. All of a sudden, when he finished, went to the pastor's office and we were discussing the service. Then the pastor said, ah, that pastor friend of yours, he said some nasty things about you. And he recounted it to Bob Jones. Bob Jones is the spiritual father of um, Rick Joyner. So, Pastor Bob Jones said, as soon as he heard it, he said, his ministry will not end in a good place. This is the end of his ministry. He said, as soon as he said that, the Holy Ghost said to him, you use my power to fight your own brother in me. That's what Jesus told him. He said, so you use the power I gave you to fight me by your brother. He said, immediately Jesus said to him, he says, for every word you said, you suffer ailment for it. He said, his ministry will not survive. Five words. So he said for five months he was not well. This one is clear on camera so I can see it. One day, Kenneth Copeland Copeland said he was speaking against Pastor Benny Hinn's marriage. That his marriage failed and he was disappointed. Blah, 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 blah. He said said it in person. After some months he felt sick. And when he felt sick he said, "Ah, he has God. I don't fall sick. I work in divine health. Blah, blah, blah. God said you spoke about my servant Benny Hinn. About his failed marriage. Then he said, hey, Lord, please, I'm sorry. Please, how do I redeem myself? He said, as you ask for forgiveness, call him also and confess. So he called Benny and said, Pastor Benny, this is what I said about you. So I think Pastor Benny recounted the story. He said, Pastor Benny, this is what I said about you. I'm really sorry. He said, Pastor Benny, just said, oh, you're forgiving, sir. He said, that's how the sickness left him. Let me tell you something. I've come to a place in God. When I start speaking ill about somebody, I begin to have running stomach. I feel it. So I'll tell you, you realize that when you start going someplace, I don't want to talk again. I'm beginning to feel Something in my body. I know I'm going to get sick if I continue. Now, we are prophets. One day, I was not happy with a certain friend of mine. And I went to a prayer meeting. A spirit sat on me. The last time a spirit sat on me was 11 years ago. I went to a hotel. When I entered, I didn't pray. I just laid down. The thing came to sit on me. I couldn't see Jesus. Sitting on me. I woke up sweating. But I remembered the believer's authority. And I sat on my bed. I said, I won't pray. I said, Satan, I warn you. Come again. I'm going back. I said, if you try this. I'm, I went to sleep. He, he has not shown up in five years. And he didn't show up in five years till that day. Somebody offended me. I went for a retreat. In retreat, oh, I'm going to pray to God. A black entity entered the retreat grounds. Sat on me. I couldn't see Jesus. The room was black. And I said, and the thing cleared. The lights came on. And I came to my side. I said, Lord, what happened? He said, you were a prophet. So I made you experience what many Christians don't realize is happening in their life. As soon as you take offense with one of you, something has sat on you. Oh, I'm telling you. It's a serious matter. Sometimes you see, we allow you to be fine. But when we see you angry with this person, we are watching you. And the reason why, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are angry with this person. You are, something has sat on you. 
<laughs> the day I finished, the Holy Ghost said, never in your life, even if you are right to the rightness, ever allow this journey. Because if it is not the love of the master, who will come back to a man who betrayed him three times? I don't know him. I don't know him. And the man was looking for him. To the extent that after he showed himself to him, talking to him, he still went fishing and carried the people fishing. We go as sorry. That's destroyed the ministry. He said, Andrew, James, let's go. Me, I brought you here. Let's go. <laughs> I'm the head of the ministry. Now we are starting fishing ministry international. Bible said to the extent that he was naked. It means he has, the word naked means he was fully drenched in the work. You know, for a fisherman to be naked is a serious matter. So Bible says, as soon as he saw it was Jesus, he quickly went to take a garment on him well on wall and came back. And Jesus, Jesus didn't say, Peter, do you remember last time what I told you? When you betrayed me, pain me. Peter, on the cross, I was just saying in my head, Lord, he said, you are one of the reasons I said, Father, forgive them. Hey, I nearly curse you. <laughs> Jesus never did that. The brother came to Peter and said, love it down me. Love us down me. Three times, love us down me. And he said, I'll feed my flock. The thing I told you last time, you are still going to continue. After the man betrayed him. Do you know because of that kind of love Peter received? There was boldness in Peter's ministry. He could preach and say, Jesus, whom you betrayed? I was not part. All of you know, you betrayed him. He had confidence that Jesus has forgiven him. Listen, if you know you are forgiven, you will be fine. I quoted the last week, first, second Peter chapter 1, that he says, add to your faith, diligence, temperance, all those. He says, if you don't know you have been forgiven of your sins, you can't be diligent in adding. You'll be unfruitful because every day you're like, ah, how God forgive me? Ah, how God. You will never pray again. But if you know he has forgiven you, you can start a new shit again. You can start praying again. If any man be in Christ, it's a present continuous reality. It means that any time you come into yourself that you realize you are in Christ, a new creation begins. It's not just a one-time event. Pure heart. No more ill feelings. Go home and pray. Because sometimes the ill, but I shared with you, I didn't, okay, probably I didn't share it here. One day Joseph Prince said, every day they are driving, cars will be crossing them and he was angry. And he said, he was angry at God. That, why, why, why? And he said, Holy Ghost told him, there's something in your heart. I'm using the drivers to bring it out. I never knew I had an evil eye to a trotter driver across me. Then you see a prophet, I'll be giving eye. You know, there's nothing painful that you, you know, human nature is sad that you don't want to be insulted for what you don't know about. And someone will just pass by you and be giving you a sign. Hey, there's a way it can enter you and want to park the car. You see, man of God, I'll give evil eye. Then I realized that evil spirits are around. <laughs> Deliver us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Hey, can I run through this? I'll try and run through. Okay. Okay, I got some time. All right. So please, beloved, he says, if you overcome, there's a certain enjoyment you enjoy in the paradise of God. All of us as children of God, we are eating the tree of life. But he says, those who overcome, there's a full eating. That is different from what everybody has enjoyed as generally. Can I put it to you? Do you know that Jesus Christ has given us the way? Eternal life. How have you know that? But Bible says, to him that overcomes temptation, they will have crown of life. So do you, we all have life, oh, but there are some people who have the crowning of life. Christ is our righteousness. But Paul said, not for me only, but for everyone that loveth is appearing. There's something waiting for you called the crown of righteousness. So we all have God's righteousness, but there's something called the crowning of that righteousness. Don't joke with it. We'll all not be in this. And next week I'll show you. And I'll explain to you why we'll all not be the same. And I'll show you why it will be very painful that you are working with your spouse and your glory is higher than her. Or it's different. And I'll tell you next week that our history is not his history. There's a way God writes his story. I'm telling you. If God didn't write his story the way he has to write it, then Tamar will not be called as part of the lineage of Christ. Because humanly speaking, will condemn the woman for sleeping with her father-in-law. Because Judah didn't know. He was deceived. But Tamar was aware. Not only so. If we're following the genealogy and the way human beings write their history, Rahab, Bathsheba shouldn't be written. Because even when God got to Bathsheba, they wrote Bathsheba, David's wife. That's how they recorded it. De Bathsheba, David's wife. You and I, who write, Bathsheba, like, we, we, we have a condemnatory kind of spirit. 
That's why I said, when we get to heaven, eh, we have a great record. That's why I'm telling you, if you are here, you are hearing me under the sound of my voice. Don't judge yourself when God has not judged you. Because you might be judging yourself prematurely. God has a different book. I said, God has a different book. Next week, you understand, books are open. Notice, all the judgment, there's not one book that's open. Books. It's a balancing. I'll show you next week. I'll show you the power of heart. The power of intention. So, in heaven, there's something called the power of intention versus the error of application. The power of intention is heavier than the error of application. <laughs> Verse 8. Mm. That's the day I came to realize that, brother, I will not measure any man of God again. I will not agree with your doctrine, praise God, but I will not judge you that you go to hell. I'll not be surprised one day some of the false prophets will call, we'll meet them in heaven, and they'll be speaking their English there. <laughs> but I'll not mention them, so it's like, hey, now this is on YouTube. Before next time, they'll put me on radio station and say, Prophet Adam Bina, why you call me, sir? You're insulting me. Let me end here. Amen. A doubt to you, may patch us a heavy abyssia. Amen. Patch us a abyssia heaven. In the abyssia heaven. Revelation chapter 2, the verse number 8. Who is he that judges another man's servant? Well, you didn't employ him. So if God called him and he's David and went to fornicate, but you will be, you, then a lot of you would have criticized David. Even Jesus, you will not try. Some of you think you love Jesus. You don't love him more. He's a Jesus you think you love. But if you saw the Jesus at work, you, there's nothing. Eat with strangers, insult the Pharisees, vipers. A prostitute to walk up. And you know, for a prostitute to kiss your feet, it means that the, the kissing was worrying them. A prostitute, you know, a son, hey, Jesus, we are collecting current. Jesus of Nazareth, the holiest man of all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God has a book. Oh. That's why I say anything you are doing, make sure it is not eye service. The king of kings must be the only approver, not any man. Not any man. If you follow men, <laughs> don't take you somewhere. He says to the angel of the church of men, are right. Can we together want to go? These things. All right. All right, right, right. Keep reading. Keep reading quickly. Uh huh. Tribulation, poverty. But thou art rich. And I know you are Jews and are not of the, but are not, but of the synagogue of Satan. Yes, next. Fear none. Which thou shalt suffer. So it says, fear none of the things which thou art shall suffer. Now notice he didn't say, I will deliver you from suffering. Are we here together? He said, fear none of the things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil will what? So some of you are going to prison. Amen? Uh -huh. Next one. That you will be what? Uh -huh. And that you will have what? For what? But be faithful. Now he didn't say, be faithful so you are delivered from death. He said, faithful unto death. It means you will die. It means there's a, there's a tribulation that's going to kill you and you are going to grow through it. But he said, when, I, when you go through it, I'll give you the crown of life. Next one, verse 11, quickly. It says, by he hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. He that overcometh, he will not be hurt with the hurt of what? The second death. Now, what he's trying to tell you is this, that the next thing about the overcomer is, the overcomer must learn. First one, you must learn to maintain your first love. How do you do it? Anytime your love is reducing, go back to God. Spend time with him, be intimate. The next thing, using smena. Smena means mere, tearful affliction. That's smena, tearful affliction. It means the next thing that makes you an overcomer is the ability to suffer. Tell your neighbor, suffer. Tell your neighbor, suffer. Say, suffer. I didn't say suffer, I said suffer. So it means that as an overcomer, can you go to 2 Timothy 3, verse 12? 2 Timothy 3, 12, quickly. 2 Timothy 3, 12. What does it say? Uh huh. And all that what? shall live godly in Christ Jesus, shall suffer persecution. Now, this is what I want to bring your mind to. A lot of Christians don't like persecution. We don't like trouble. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24 said, and Moses, look at what Moses did. Hebrews 11 24. Hebrews 11 24. And faith, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Verse, yeah, next one. Next one. Chosen rather to suffer affliction. So he chose. This was a choice. Hey, it was a choice. To suffer affliction with the people of God and to enjoy the pleasures, down to enjoy the pleasures of sins for a season. Next one. 
So obviously you can see in tandem what he's talking about. He's not talking about the sufferings that Jesus did to redeem us. He's talking about the suffering which has to do with denials rather than the pleasures of sin. The pleasures of what everybody is doing. I will suffer separation. Everybody is doing things before they marry. I won't. Affliction. It's a choice. Everybody's adding zero before the, you know. I didn't say this, but do you know it's because people don't know the love God has for them. That's why they rob. Because if you know God loves you, you will not distrust God and try to help God by adding zeros. It's because you don't know he loves you. If you knew God loves you, you will not have a side chick because you are afraid your wife is not enough. Yeah, many of the guys who have side chick is because they are afraid their wife is not enough. Like, so when you tell somebody you are going to marry a woman, you stay with her for the... But like, so won't cheat? I say yes. Nonsense. But yeah, for the rest of your life. It's true. So you will stay with her. Drink out of the... Bible says, drink out the waters of your own well. Stolen waters are sweet. But there's a sister, said, your well, there's a well. You have to drink from it. 15 years in the marriage, 20 years in the marriage, when the teeth are coming out, drink, keep drinking. When they enter menopause and there's nothing that is happening again in the bedroom, drink, keep drinking. Stay there. Don't say man has needs. Hey, drink it. Love the Lord. Ababaya koshaba. That's why I tell you that the thing is not about sex. If it's about sex, you look for replacement. Yeah. That's what many, I mean, many people who cheat, apparently they cheat within the time of after six months of pregnancy when they can't have sex with their wives. That's why they cheat. And six months to, the, in six months, like six months, three months to delivery, three months after delivery to six months, they are cheating. And that's why the thing becomes permanent because you are not getting what you are getting because the whole relationship is sexual. But if it's intimate conversation, because intimacy is not sex. I'll show you during counseling. Intimacy is the trading of secrets. So Delilah and something have had sex, huh? but Delilah doesn't know the secret of something. Oh, hey, mama. Some people are tense. Tell your sister, relax. It's not, it's not that serious. Why are you tense? Relax. Oh, let the prophet preach his message. Oh, please. Amen. Sometimes some of you have my number. That's why I can't say something. Because after the service, you send me a text. Hello, sir. <laughs> there are some things you have to stop saying. <laughs> but if I didn't know you, I would tell you my mind. Let me call. You know my number. I'm not lying. But well, let me preach to you. Can I preach? Amen. So this affliction he's talking about, if you look at it, he's saying rather, but he esteemed the reproach. Now this is what I love. The word reproach is insult. He esteemed the reproach of Christ. Now so I'm telling you something. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21 says, look at what it says. First Peter 2 21. This Christ suffering for us as an example. Now this suffering is this. Hebrews 5, 7 and 8 says, now the days of his flesh offered up prayers to strong Christ and tears unto him that was able to hear him. Verse 8 says that now the son lent obedience through the many things he suffered. And I've used the word to tell you that the suffering there is not just, in the case of Christ, it's not pain per se, it's allowances. There were things Jesus could override, but he decided to allow. So he will learn obedience. For instance, if it's possible, Lord, take my cup. Let this cup be taken away from me. Not my will, but your will be done. That was an allowance. Why? At that instance, Jesus could have truncated the work. Number two, Jesus said to Peter, is my father not able to release unto me 12 legions of angels? It means at, my, at this present time, 12 legions of angels, about 72,000 angels are ready to come on earth. Now, if one cleared 185,000, then how do 72,000 do? That's around 13 billion plus. They will kill everybody on earth and kill again. And there will still be more people to kill. That's how, that's how angels he was available. But he decided not to use the angels. In fact, when you read this book, When God Walked the Earth, Jesus was entering the wilderness to be tempted. He told Angel Michael and the angels to stay back so that he can be tempted. He doesn't need assistance. That's why the Bible says after he was tempted 40 days, the angels came to minister. It means they were not with him. They now came. He stopped them from coming. Yay. These are the things he suffered. So there are things I always tell you that there are th to suffer for God is not for every Christian. It's, a, it's, it's for God's special. I'll preach to you next week. There's a place in heaven for the Matthias. They are the special class of God. Those who suffered for the Lord. Those who are losing their head. Those who are losing their hand for Jesus. They are not in your class. No, 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 no. You lost a job and, 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 and somebody broke your heart and, you know, Christianity is not the way I used to think it is. Hey, 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 hey. Because a guy broke your heart. Somebody's losing their head and they are still praising God. 
Do you know that at this time, time will fail us to go into the zigical dimension of this, but at this time they were writing the story, about 30 million Christians had been martyred. Martyred. Chewed by lions. Big. In fact, <laughs> the bishop of Smyrna was called Polycarp. Time will fail me to talk about Polycarp. A serious martyr. The king said, Polycarp, deny Jesus or die. He said, oh king, 80 and 5 years have I served the Lord. Not once has he done me evil. Then he said, if you don't serve him, I'll throw you into this lion's mouth. He said, oh, the lion will find me as pure grain and grind me as fine flour unto my Lord. But oh king, where will you be after death? Oh yes, that's Polycarp. What are you talking about? Polycarp, hmm, stop, 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 stop. That's Mena. No, these people will come in heaven. And God will bring them. And he said, they saw lions. Do you know what for a lion to bite you? No. Then if you know how lions kill, they don't kill like pussycats. Or that dog in your house. Lions go for your throat. So after when they go for your throat, they don't even pull it out. They crush your thorax. So they crush this windpipe. Crack, and their teeth is there. So you stop losing breath. So you'll be there like this. And that's how the lion will finish you. Before they start chewing you little by little. And the man saw all this pain. And he said, 80 and 6 years have I served the Lord. In this generation, we don't know suffering. We don't. We are like babies. As soon as there's more heat, eh. <laughs> eh, too much heat. Heat rush, heat rush, Lord. Heat rush. I need it to be cool. Yeah, we can't. The Bible says, those who, to be a Mofakama, you must suffer some things. You must lose some friends. I've lost friends because I told Jesus. Do you know how weird it looks like for me to be speaking in tongues in campus? I didn't want to because the day I even spoke in tongues, I was in Lacoste and Jeans and Chuck Taylors. So I didn't plan. If I planned out, I'd be in a tie and a suit and batik and I'd be wearing my Bible like this because I came to pray. I didn't plan. I was just walking. I said, hey. And the guy started, let go by supper. By the time I realized the Holy Ghost grabbed me, I prayed the Subali Kappa. And we greeted like that. After the greeting, we couldn't speak in English. We were going Kapika Preto. Labor, we moved from Brunei. We went to Katanga. And whilst we were going to Katanga, the brethren that were led joined us. So every hostel we went to were increasing numbers. Do you know we did every hall on Kenya University campus and continued to Ediasi? She pa pa pa. And we're increasing. My classmates saw me. I saw girls I liked. May you many cry. I told you about that. I've won that course or something. So I and jeans, man, shut up. But I knew I have to suffer something for the Lord. I had to suffer some loss for the Lord. I had to suffer societal approval. I used to play basketball with John Duma, all those people, but I couldn't hang out with them. Because now God had called me. My own friend came to say, Adam. It looks like the immunology master sentence, you know, will happen. I said, why? He said, the way we were praying. I said, brother, that's the end. The PhD has stopped. I'm done. I've run away for a long time. When I came to first year, I went to gym. All sort of girls liked me. Yeah. One gym, big muscle, big chest, big legs. So then, that's how I'm walking like this. And you know when you gym, you want to wear singlets. So you wear the singlets. You're just... <laughs> I said, butter bread. Say, uh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I'm collecting the admiration of girls. And one day God spoke to me. He said, Adam, I didn't call you to come and be admired by women. Oh, because I fear the Lord, I would have entered trouble. I'm telling you, it's God. It's the fear of God. Oh. I'll teach you the fear of God. Some with some ladies will sit on your laps. <laughs> Who gave me that drink? I'm confessing a lot of things. <laughs> truth serum, truth serum. <laughs> sit on my laps. And because I fear the Lord, this time my hand was. <laughs> don't touch, don't touch. My brother, don't touch. So in my head, my hands are like this. Why? Because I have to appear an overcomer. No, it was so serious that I went to lay hands on somebody at Padro. That's the park we pray on campus. The person I was imparting was shocked. 
Like they were shocked though. Like, you know, people found out the power. She didn't find the power. She fell under the shock. <laughs> like she was looking at her like, whoa. Like, no. Because nobody knew my spiritual status. Nobody. Except God. And probably my roommates, Pastor Philip and Elder and Sichama. They were they both knew my spiritual status. Nobody outside knew my they didn't know my pedigree. They didn't know the house had prayed. They didn't know when I started speaking the Holy Ghost. They didn't know I was working in prophetic accuracy. They didn't know. Nobody. I go to the park. Nobody sees me. I'm praying alone. So even up to now, when you tell somebody, ah, do you know prophet them? Ah, he was not Christian like that on campus. Eh? They don't know. The Holy Ghost said, it's time to suffer loss. I lost friends. Now when people do drink up, they don't call me. Because you are too spiritual. You will judge us. You know, there's a way you won't say anything, but the way you come and cross your leg, you're like, I'm telling you, is there also? By the time God, God also delivered me. I, I could go for drink up. You know, there's a way you go as a guy. You have to ask girls to dance. You know, standing there, someone, someone walks, can I dance with you? I say, hey, sir, want to dance with me? And because I had now increased in spiritual pedigree, I could tell the lady, I'm sorry. I can't dance. I told her I won't dance. Eh? Then the next time I'm laying hands, people will go like, no. <laughs> because even that one, I've not danced. They were shocked. Then I'm dancing. Uh-uh. Don't try Satan has a way of making you a spectacle when you do a mistake. Do you know that? Yeah. I had to suffer the loss of... A lot of you don't want to suffer the loss of friends. You don't want to suffer the loss of certain opportunities because you want everything in this world. But he said, endure. If you live godly for Jesus Christ, you will suffer persecution. They will insult you about Jesus. But the Bible says, Moses was excited to be insulted. Do you know what it meant? They insulted Moses as a foolish fool. You had the opportunity to be a prince in Egypt. You are following a God you can't even see. I say he enjoyed the insult and esteemed it higher. Let me tell you, anytime they insult you because of Jesus, you are becoming too spiritual. What kind of God cry are you seven? Know that it is record, it's increasing. The next time, don't be sad. It is immaturity to, to cry when they insult you because of Christ. The next time they insult you because of Jesus, smile and say, please, can you add more? Because it is greater riches. Let them insult you for fooling Christ. Let them say you are a fool for taking God seriously. You will see what God will do soon. It's your riches. It is your riches. It is your riches. I said it's your riches. I said it's your riches. Amen. Amen. Let them tell you that only, are you the only Virgin Mary? Eh? Everybody is doing something. You don't want us to do something to you. Let, eh? Yeah. Hey. Tell your neighbor, hey. Praise the Lord. Amen. Are we together? So you have to understand that it is given. Bible says in Philippians 1.29, it says that now it's given unto us to suffer. It's given. Philippians 1.29 is given for God gives it. It is given on behalf of Christ, not only to suffer, but to also suffer for his sake. And this suffering is not the suffering of redemption. I'm not saying suffer sickness. I'm not saying suffer death. I'm not saying suffer the loss of um, um, family member. No. The suffering I'm talking about is a constricted life where what everybody is doing, you can't do. It's not a sin, no, but you can't do it. I told you about sanctification. Sanctification is not about sin. It's about uncommonness. So it might not be sin, but it's common. Everybody does it. You don't do it. That's what I've told everybody in Ephesus. It's not volunteers. Your birthday going fast. No, by now you should die. What are you celebrating? I mean, I told you the reason why I do that is, Mama didn't want to on her birthday to fast. You know why? Because before you celebrate anything, you must do evaluation. What have I done this year? Is the Lord pleased? By the time we finish with this series, eh, you realize that even to do something as little as turning your car, you ask the Lord. I'm telling you. Oh. It's time. I could have been a PhD student easily. Easily. I remember, Pastor G, are you here? Yeah, I remember, I sent you, when I started working at ministries, I sent you a Standard Chartered Bank email. He too, he reject, rejected it. I got a, an email from Standard Chartered when I started working. Around 2008, 2009. No, up to two tests. They said, I've, I've passed this in the um, graduate managerial training in London. My mother's friend was part of the directors at the head office. So they sent me the form that I should fill it and come to London to be trained as a manager in Standard Chart. That's not the thinking the Holy Ghost said, if you take it, you are off course. I heard it. I said, Lord, who do I give it to? He said, try Godfrey. <laughs> <laughs> I forwarded it to him. 
He too, he said, ah, God told him not to take it. Listen, so we all have had chances. Imagine I've done master's. Imagine I've done PhD. Recently, somebody told me, he said, Daddy, if you were a doctor, you wouldn't have survived. I said, why? He said, you take things personal. It's true. So the Holy Ghost told me clearly, he said, the reason I didn't let you do medicine to quit, like Bishop Dag, is because you get engrossed too much. Because you take everything you do personal. So it means God will have struggled to get me as a doctor, quitting to become a pastor. And I'm going to do civil service paperwork. Now I mean myself because I was not happy. <laughs> so it's easy for me to say I'm done. <laughs> do you understand? Can I tell you something? Those who want to work, they might not get the work because they are making probably their work their God. It is those who don't want it, they end up getting it because it will never be their God. The whole point is that if the thing captures you, God won't give it to you. That's all. That's why don't, don't let a fine boy capture you like that because if, a, if Satan really a fine boy is your capturing, you are going to hell. He knows what to use the fine boy to do. Who mentioned now when I'm here? So the boy is fine or is not fine. It's not your concern. That God is happy is what is your concern. I told you the last time, steep your life. God initiative, God provision, God, hallelujah, God reality. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we here? Say be excited. First Peter 4.14. First Peter 4.14. Overcomers are enjoying their crowns. Overcomers are enjoying their crowns. We will enjoy our crowns. We will enjoy our crowns. He says, for if ye be reproached for Christ's name's sake, happy are ye. For the spirit of glory rests upon you. It means that anybody who enjoys insult about Jesus, that's how God's glory will sit on you. I'm telling you. So the more people say you're a useless person every day, church, 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 the more you're excited. So it means you're not being excited about it prevents the resting of glory. Anytime you go to God, you see, because of you, because, hey, you are preventing the glory of God to rest. But when you take it excitedly, happy are ye. Mm. Matthew 10, 39. Let me end with that one. The suffering of the last, the second death. So I'm not talking of suffering. It's a suffering of example. Jesus was God, but he reduced himself to be hungry. He reduced himself to be thirsty. He reduced himself to sleep on all sorts of things. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Please, I'm preaching about heaven. You know, heaven is eternity. I'm compressing it in something, so please help me. He that findeth his life shall what? Lose it. He that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. Can you show passion translation so that I move to the next church? Don't worry. I won't, I won't keep long. I'll just go to. Hey, who is that? <laughs> you don't believe your father in the Lord. Why did you laugh like that? I said, I'm jumping to the next church. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 I can end, huh? I can, but I've not touched the churches. Relax. Next week, I'm, next week, I'm not touching on the churches. I'm going straight to the civilization. So, it's a, it's a, let me put it this way. It's a compendium of the book of Revelation, Daniel, Ezekiel, a whole lot of things. Plus dreams and visions and encounters of years. So that two hours is really small. It's really small. Amen. Now, can we read it together? I want to go. It's a simple statement. So anything you are seeking for without God, you will lose it. I'm telling you. That's why your greatest spiritual financial accurate transaction is, is God in this? Is God leading you? Otherwise, you will lose it. He said, everything you seek that is apart from me, you will lose it. But those who let go of their lives for my sake and surrender it all will discover true life. When you should travel, when you should accept this invitation. Some people come to your prophet, I think you should travel. I say, oh, that's nice. But the Holy Ghost has not released me. It's beyond even my itinerary. It's, it's at the level of God releasing me. If I'm not released, I won't travel. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Say it's time to suffer for the Lord. It's time to suffer. Praise the Lord. Know that you are given opportunity. And if you live for yourself, Revelations 2 said, you will suffer the head of the second death. The head of the second death is like, like I said it. The second death is the lake of fire according to Revelation 20. But the head of the second death is you weep and gnash your teeth but just that you won't be in fire. And the head is you regret lost opportunities. 
Who you should have picked in your car you didn't pick and what would have given you? In fact, in heaven, God will show you the pictures. If you had picked this person in your car, you would have had a discussion and you would have get a, got a number. And that number would have led you to that $6 million contract. But you were too self-involved. You missed the chance. Sometimes not even the conversation room. Where you will drop the person. As you drop the person. Do you know sometimes someone wants to call you but you are standing at the wrong place. So the network can reach you. Sometimes where you drop the... I, 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 next week, make sure you don't miss it. Even standing at a location, the house you stay in, all are synchronized for certain events in your life. If you miss it, you'll be chasing time and you'll never find it. You'll never find it. Hey. Are we here? <laughs> so weeping and gnashing of teeth will happen. The grief will be so strong that God will be the only one who can placate you. Because you will see it. The people you should have paid fees for, the life you would have had if you were just consistent in your giving, the way your prayer life would have gone if you were just obeying, that the way your marriage would have been if you had avoided a certain relationship when you would have married, all those things you would see it and say, ah! And I was crying on them for nothing because I missed certain things. So please, if God is constricting your life, allow him. He knows what he's doing. God is too wise. He knows what he's doing. He knows where you are going. That's why he has not given you some things now. Allow him. Allow him. I say allow him. I say allow him. Say to yourself, I allow him. Say I allow him. Say I allow him. Because I've never worshipped money before, it's easy to give it. Money has never been my goal in life. That's why I was able to go and work in a job that was earning me 321 Ghana City. As a graduate, and a God want. And I quit my job, sir, with 1,312 Ghana City salary after seven years of working. Three months after my marriage, that's when I quit my job. Two years before I started, we started Ephesus. So I quit my job 2017, March, there about, yeah. Six months later, my tight was more than my salary. So my, my blessing has never been tied to a ministry. No, 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 don't get it wrong. So by six months without church, I'll be in the house, I'll go to this place, I'll go here. God just found a way to make sure that by the time I was giving my tithe after six months, that one I cried, I didn't forget, my, my father and the Lord, Dr. John was the one told me. He said, man of God, by September, do you know the tithe you gave me was more than your salary you earned? Before you quit. So that tight by September of 2017, I was more than 1,003 tight. I mean, supernaturally, God had given 14,000. Way more than I would have. So I look at my office when I said, You people, and they were calling me around that time. Are you okay? Do you want to come back? I said, Me. <laughs> the car I got was not from work. God used somebody to give me a car free of charge whilst I was working. So they thought I had bought a car with car loan. The house I got was not from work. So I know that nothing came from work. Save for the fact that work was my bank to sow. So work can never, not in the ages to come. Can I tell you something about work? Work is your contribution to society. It is your, it's not the place you get sustenance. When you work, it is your contribution to society. It has nothing to do with what keeps you. I'm advising you today. Next time you work, be excited to help society. To give them solutions. But that's not where God takes care of you from. Because social salary bills are answered. Because in economic scale of preference, the larger your salary, the higher your expenditure. It's a simple process. You go like, oh, when I get ten thousand dollars, your bill will be twelve thousand dollars. It's it's a strange thing. So don't ever think you're bigger the salary, the more it will be easier. It, it, if it's not enough today, it will never be enough tomorrow. I'm telling you today, it, if it's not enough today, thousand three was fine for me. If you saw me. You will never know I was earning 1,003. One day I gave a seed. I was earning 700 Ghana CD. And my monthly seed at the time was 350 CDs. So I told Papa George, I said, Daddy, this is how much I earn. When I take tight 70 Ghana of a 670, 630 that's left, and I give you 350 as tight. He said, Ah, you give me half of it. I said, Yes, sir. When I was earning 1,000, my monthly seed was 700 CDs. He said, Man of God. I said, he said, I have to tell people that you give me all your salary. I said, I know where I'm going. I will not live on this morning. So I have to create a system where in the spirit, 
Even if a, God, God told me never to collect salary from a church. So even if a ministry decides not to take care of me, God will find revenues. I, I told them, this is about 10, 12 years ago. Remember, I used to say it at ATTC that God told me never take a cobble from the ministry. Because if I'm going to take it, then it means the day the ministry can handle me. That's when they can. My, my bill is too much. My bill. What's up? My bill. My bill. It's serious. <laughs> I'm not scaring you. And I've said it before. I started 5 Ghana, 10 Ghana, 15 Ghana, 20 Ghana, 30 Ghana, 40 Ghana. I'm not looking for your money, me. <laughs> Sometimes when somebody gives you 8 Ghana city, I'm like, in Jesus' name, don't go far. Because your faithfulness with 8 means you'll be faithful with 8 million. Oh, Lord. Next church, next church, next church. We have left Statiria. It's Smyrna. We are in Pegamos. Now, Pegamos is from two words. Pegos, Gamos. Gamos is marriage. Pegos is elevation. Elevated in marriage. At this time, the church was now married to the world. That's why God came to them as a two-edged sword. Time will fail me to go into exegesis. Notice when the Bible uses two-edged sword, it's always in the dimension or de facto place where God is separating two realities. The word of God is a double-edged sword, separating bone from marrow, spirit from soul. So the moment Jesus comes like this, it means that there is a merger that needs to be separated. At Pergamos, the church has married the world. Worldliness has entered the church. Isn't it amazing that the church has begun to love the world when the church was called the called out ones? The church was supposed to leave the world. Now the church has turned back to love the world. The Bible says here, the seat of Satan is here. And at the time, the proconsul of Asia, in the Roman Empire, was in Pergamos. And God said that proconsul seat was actually the seat of Satan for the world. So that's where Satan's spiritual seat was also. And God said that's where the headquarters of Satan was. But he said, even in the days of Antipas, Antipas, if you know the word, is Latin. P-A-S is all, pass. Anti is against. So Antipas means against all. My faithful matter. Do you know how they killed Antipas? They put him in a stadium and they fried him in a cordon of oil. Alone. No, you see, it's easier for the ladies to understand. Men, we don't like oil. You know, anytime you tell a guy to put fish in frying pan, that's men. Big chested men. This is how we go. Men, we don't like oil to blue. Pa! Women can endure it. In their face anywhere. At Antipas, they put him in hot oil. Cauldron doesn't mean shallow frying, deep. And it was very hot. So it tells you it's slow baking. You put a human being inside. It means leg. I don't know how they dropped him. But it means you should, you should feel what will go through his body. Just because of Jesus. Oh, the Jesus that today people are saying, use common sense, use wisdom, use wisdom. And deny him today, tomorrow you accept him. Hey, brother, Antipas. On that day, Antipas will show up. And you know, God, I'll show you tomorrow. The reason why in heaven, eh, some people will show up with their pains and their scars. There's a reason for that. The Bible says, Jesus Christ, he's the lamb of God. So when you enter heaven, you'll see the lamb still. Not only lamb, he said, the lamb that was bruised for our sickness. So in heaven also, he still has the scars as his beautification. You see all his stripes, all his body, holes in his hands still. I'll show you why all of that looks like it looks like. Where Satan was, huh, huh, next, 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 quickly. I want to show you what to overcome here. So, in Smyrna, the overcomer must learn to suffer. Eh? You are not using fake passports and they bounced you. Hooray! Don't say because of that, you have to go and do arranged marriage. You have to go and do this to travel. Sister, learn to suffer. This generation will like opportunities and most of them are satanic. I'm telling you, most of them are satanic. And since that day you chose it, you are never free. If you want to go to America, God will let you go and you'll be tired. You will go the right way and nobody will stop you. Somebody waited eight years for that prophecy to come to pass. He didn't go and do arranged marriage. Eight years for a common a London distance to come to pass. Why are you rushing to? <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. But you have entertained 
the doctrine of Balaam. Now, Balaamism, let me go quickly. Balaamism is a very serious doctrine. Now, number one, Balaamism is taking gain or using the gospel for merchandise. And this is a direct application to pastors. You know, there's some pastors when they see congregation, they see seed. So after the program, pa, lift up your hands. Then they'll start a prophetic move. Then you go like, there are seven people here. God is telling you you can give thousand. Come out. There's no revelation behind it. Let me tell you something. Anytime you take offering without purpose, you are stealing. You are stealing. That's why in Ephesus, I don't even tell you to bring the seat to the front. I tell you, we are hosting this man of God. And that's the reason why we bring big caskets and, hey, I call it caskets. Big baskets. <laughs> So if it's beyond basket, it's a casket. It's a, it's a human being can die. We bring those big baskets to the front so that you see that the seed you sow, the thousand you sow, the five thousand you sow, we didn't swallow it. We put it into things. You, you are seeing it. Now this one, they didn't use 200 Ghana to do it. This is not Don Simon gift. Amen? You know, there's a way a hamper when you put it Don Simon biscuits, digestive, rich tea, blue band margarine. <laughs> that's your hamper. No, that's do uh, this uh, Saint Lucia uh, sh- sh- sugar? No, that's not what we did. It was real gift. Amen. Yeah. If you didn't know, one of the gifts he had a, a whole laptop in it. Yeah, we had a laptop in the, one of the gifts. So it's not we are not stealing your money to do anything. It's to bless the man of God. Amen. But any time Balaam shows up, merchandise, merchandise, merchandise. Praise the Lord. And he said, Balaam doesn't only do this. Oh. Balaam is so intelligent that Balaam has realized what he can do to mess up the church. He told them that I've cursed, cursed, cursed. This people is not working. So what we'll do now is that let us find a stumbling block for them. And the stumbling block is that we'll make them sleep and marry strange women who will introduce their gods to them. And the moment they do that, their, their protection is lost. Why? Because the moment they start serving other gods, the seat called the mercy seat will lose blood. Because now, the priests do not offer blood because they are serving another God. That's what idolatry does in the spirit. The blood of the covenant is sprinkled on the mercy seat. But the moment Satan gives you chance to go and worship another God, it means the service of the spiritual house is not being done. And then you are exposed to attack. So once Israel is not pouring the, mess, the blood on the mercy seat, that year they are not getting bumper harvest. That year their sins are not forgiven. That year, they are not in jubilee because something else has taken their attention from the service of God. That's how serious idolatry is. Because the moment Satan takes your attention, the offering of the blood for your jubilee is not being done again. Then you are exposed to losing every battle you fight. And that's what Balaam introduced. And that's Balaamism has entered the church. Are you here? I said, Are you here? That's the doctrine of Balaam. The error of Balaam. And Bible also said that, aside this one, but these people also entertained a group of people called the Nicolaitans. The Nicolaitans. And I'll show you what God's people have to do to overcome. They introduced the spirit of Nicolaitanism. And the Nicolaitans actually, uh, according to church history, Irenaeus and the rest said that it was part, Acts chapter 6, there was a gentleman called Nicholas, who was part of the deacons that were chosen? Pokoros, Nicholas, Nicano, um, in Acts chapter 6, Stephen, Philip. Uh-huh. So they were chosen uh, to do the work of seven tables. Nicholas was part. Nicholas was actually a Gentile who converted to um, Judaism, then later converted to Christianity. So he moves religions. So by the time Nicholas became a leader in the church, Nicholas introduced the system of uh, they call it pantheism, having plural gods. So Nic- the Nicolaitans were teaching that from Islam to Buddha to Taoism to Christ, they are all the ways to God. Plurality of gods. That is Nicolaitanism. And it has entered the church. Even some pastors are saying Islam and is the same. They don't know it's, Nicol- it's the doctrine of Nicolaitans. That's already in the church. Yeah. I don't want to get too ezekial, but that's the thing. It's entered. Number two, Nicolaitanism is also what we call the hierarchy system that has plagued the church to date. The Nicolaitans introduced hierarchical system, the clergy from the laity. So they, they introduced what we 
jokingly say, some people hear God better. So the Nicolaitanism says that the priests know God. They are the expert in God. Just as a doctor is an expert in health, a teacher is an expert in education, a lawyer is an expert in the law, a priest is an expert in spiritual things. And the members are laity. They shouldn't worry themselves. You can sit in the church today. So if you're not a pastor, there are some spiritual things you don't want to do. Because are, are you a pastor? Why are you taking this person now? That's the spirit of Nicolaitanism. And he said to be an overcomer, you must overcome Balaamism. Using God for merchandise. Some people come and serve in the ministry because of what they'll get. And me, I always tell God that God, you know I would have done better in business than this thing I'm making me do. Because waiting for God to supply versus doing your moves. You understand? Yeah. Because I would have used prophetic. I'll just sit behind Forex. It's going down here. It's going up here. I'll use prophetic to beat the Forex system. Easy. One day I was talking to somebody, I said, ah, Manchester is going to lose. I told them, was that in the house? Was it the, um, were in the house? England, the finals. You were there when I said it. He was there. I was just, we just watching tears. I said, ah, I see England jubilating. But it ended in tears. I stood them crying. I don't know what is happening. So I was at a program somewhere and I came, I said, what happened? I saw England score first. And it ended in tears. <laughs> so even whilst we are talking, I'm, I'm seeing things. So I can use prophetic to do bet. Hey. Or see some lotto numbers. I'm done proud. It's not waiting for God to come here, maybe. I understand. But the point is that that's Balaamism. Merchandise. Merchandise. Balaam will call you and say, Hello. <laughs> the Lord has shown me a vision. So I see. Drop something in the account. Oil the wheels of the spirit. So that my eyes will open. Bring venison. It's a long someone send me a text. I, it's a long time I ate your money. Let me have it. I, I see something. I want to. If you don't sow the seed, I can't release it. Yeah. Some of you I can stand three hours. We'll be talking. Blah, blah. I'll be feeling dizzy. You don't even know. Whatever is happening to prophet, you don't even know. You are just, ah, prophet. Mm, ah, prophet, you don't understand. Ah, prophet. Mm. You know, yesterday, I was answering text messages that were sent to me 10th September. Can you imagine? I was not there. Hey. I've not said this. Hello. Yes, the Lord bless you. Amen. Yes, it's well. That's what it means. I was now answering text messages after almost one month plus. But sometimes the things are too much. But we will never send you a text that, hey, sister, you have wasted my data. I've called you, called you. When will you send an offering? And nobody here can say that prophet has ever sent you a text. Hello. Are you still working? Have they fired you from the office? It's a long time I saw something. It's been six months. No transaction. What is going on? Not once. You can go one year. I won't call you. It's not my business. I will teach you the word. And I know some people here, they bless their pastors because they are just visiting us. Powerful. So I'll never send anybody text. Hello. It's a long time. Amen. I said Amen. Oh, it's like you're not liking the message I'm preaching. I'll close, I'll close, I'll close. Okay. So what we must overcome as the spirit of Balaamism and Nicolaitanism is that Balaam takes merchandise of God's people. Balaam also sets stumbling blocks. Balaam always takes you away from the daily sacrifice. According to Daniel 11 verse 31, he said they will corrupt them with flatteries and they will stop the daily sacrifices. That's Balaamism. Overcome that. Number two, the plurality and the knowledge that God has many avenues. It's not true. That's the spirit of Nicolaitanism. Number two, that Nicolaitanism tells you that, oh, you are not a pastor. You are a clergy. You are a late man. You just work. And the pastors do the work. It's not true. Your office is, an, is a ministry ground. Somebody must get the link at your office. Somebody is crying off. you say, sister, I want you to listen to this message. That is your office. You too, you become the pastor there. The person goes, this thing your pastor is saying, I don't understand. Say, learn like this. That's what it means. Or subscribe to the, mess, the, the link and let me give you further messages. You see the small a, a, a national service girl. All the managers are worrying her. Introduce them to the message on sex. Yes, 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 yes. It will reduce your... Did you listen? You say, hey, I listened to this message on sex. I've changed. I've locked everything with padlock. No access to Jesus come. Amen. That's what you must overcome. 
verse, verse 16, verse 16, go, 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 go. Repent else, I will come quickly unto you and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. 17. He that hath an hear, hear what the Spirit says. The church is he that overcometh, I will give him the hidden manna in the white stone. Which, and I'll, this I'll teach, I'll teach next week when I get into it. Next church, Tartaria. Next church, Tartaria. Tartaria means sacrificing on tyranny. Actually, it is the product of the church marrying the world, Pergamos. It means daughter who is oppressed. The oppressed daughter. But look what he says. That these things here, the son of God, whose eyes are like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. This speaks of God's judgment. These are the things that provokes God. And the reason is that, next one, he said, I know thy works and thy charity. You see, everyone he says, I know thy works. And thy service and thy faith and thy patience and thy works. And the last to be more than the first. Next. Now we stand there and have a few things against you. Thou suffered that woman. Now the problem here is, uh, the word that here in the Greek is actually the word, the pronoun you. It's a possessive pronoun. It means that, what he's saying is that notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee. Because thou sufferest or thou allows, you are allowing that woman. In the Greek, the word that is your. It means you are allowing your wife. It means what he was rebuking was, when he was talking to the pastor of Tartaria, he was rebuking him about his own wife. You have allowed your wife, who is operating as Jezebel. <laughs> it's a serious matter. She calls herself a prophet, a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants and to commit fornication and things that have been eaten and sacrificed unto others. Next, 21. But I gave her the space to repent. So it tells you that this person is a believer. It's not the devil. If it was the devil, God won't give him the space to repent. Hey! He's going to read it again. I gave her space to repent of her fornication. It means this person is in the church. That's why I'm telling you that in context, it's actually talking of the pastor's wife. The word that woman in the Hebrew, the Greek says, your woman. Possessive. It means your wife. Your wife is seducing the church. Now, do you know what was happening here? Tartaria was a place of trade guilds. If I was a city of commerce in terms of fabrics, trade guilds. And to do any work in Tartaria, you must be part of a guild. But the guilds were designed in such a way that to enter and to be initiated as a member of the guild, you must submit yourself to a deity that the guild worships. So when you enter the guild, you go through um, idolatry process, practices. You bow, you enter, you bow to the idol, then you enter. And the initiation ceremony they kill and have a party. And the animals you eat are the animals sacrificed to idols. And the pastor's wife was one of the heads of the guild. Because she didn't realize it. And it was so serious that if you're not part of a guild, you can't work. And if you don't follow the practice and you miss the guild meetings, you'll be sucked out of the committee. It's like what we call the uh, unions now in America. You can't get a job. You can't be put in any place. And that's actually what was happening in Titania. Beloved, what is happening is this. This is actually where there's an economic battle. I started by telling you that when it comes to commerce and finance, every commerce and financial institution is attributed or attached to a deity, even if they are not aware. Jesus Christ. Lift your hands to the heavens. Oh... I think I'll preach this. Time. Don't tempt me to go there. But I'll preach another message. It's attached to a deity. Amen? I said it's attached to what? All right. Now, next one. 22. Behold, I'll cast her into a bed with them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation. Except they repent. It means these are the people who are part of the church. They were supposed to overcome. But because they didn't overcome, God's way of dealing with them. Hear this. They'll still make heaven. But they have to go to tribulation. No, that's what he said. What did he say? Read together. Let's go. Behold, I'll cast her into the bed and them that commit adultery with her into. So it means that when the church is being raptured, these ones, I'll leave them. Because they refused to repent. Because this one, she's born again, but she has begun to practice things because of what you eat. The overcomer here must overcome the systems of the world. That's why, if you look at the next one, 23, quickly, 23. And I'll kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am with her, such as the reins of the heart. Uh -huh. Next one, next one, verse 24. 
But I say unto Tartaria and, and unto the rest in Tartaria, as many have not this doctrine and have not known the depths of Satan, I speak unto you and I will put upon you none of the other burden. Whatever they are going to go through, once you have not submitted to this guild initiation system. That's why sometimes I tell you that be careful of this um, club, Rotary. Be careful. Don't just join because it's nice. The, the masons, then you've gone to wear a ring and you are wearing color. You, it's like, oh, it's Freemasons, we don't really do anything. Hey! It's a guild. If you don't join us, we will not support your business. It's a guild. It's the depths of set. Hey, God. Right now, it's, it's shallow, shallow. A day is coming, eh? People will be required to be part of such societies before they work. I'm telling you. This whole vaccination business. They'll, they'll start using some people as exemptions. If you are in the masons, you are free. It's a reason. So that that would be the only way like, oh, I won't take the mark, but I'll be with these people. But you're still in the depths of Satan. 25. But that, oh, you've gone too fast. Go back. 24. Uh-huh. All right, next one. 25. Now this one, there are so many things here. That's why I'm just jumping to how to overcome. 26. Uh-huh. He that overcometh, uh-huh. Yeah, I'll give him power over the nations. 27. And I'll give him the rod of iron to break the potter's vessel. Now, this potter's vessel is in allusion to the Tower of Babel. Why? Because he said, come, let us big break. Let us big break. And we know brick is made from clay. Adam was made from clay, isn't it? But in the days of Nimrod, Nimrod said, let's bake the clay so that there's no water in it. So it means the small life you have as a human being, Nimrod will bake it out of you. That is Babel, Babylon. Do you know today, almost every business in the world, except it's founded on Christ, even those that are even founded on Christ, don't know they're operating by Babylon. And Babylon is designed to take God out of your life. That's why sometimes when you start working, your spiritual life can go like this, Sam. You don't understand. Babel. That's why I said that to him that overcometh, he will give you the rod to break the potter's vessel. So you are working, but your spiritual life is increasing. You can be you are, you can work 10 to 8, 24 hours, but you're hot for God because you have broken the potter's vessel. You know how to turn your, your taxi to prayer hour. You know how to go on a fasting when all of us are at workshop. Everybody is eating at the restaurant, but you enter your room. You tell them that you are not you want to enter your room a while. Then you enter the room one hour in the hotel room. When you are done, you come to the meeting. Potter's vessel. By the time they are done, they are finished eating. In your mind, you are not come to loiter around and you have to network. Hey, if you have been networking, you would have had many jobs. You have network. Ah, you yourself have become a net. Stop wasting your time. So you have to network. So when you finish the dinner, you have to sit around and waste hours. Precious hours. And you don't realize that all the conversations you are having, all the things the bosses are saying, all the nasty jokes your bosses are giving are designed to take away the small life that is left in you. Because already you are not praying well. And you're already on a workshop. You have missed church for two weeks. And you have time to sit behind bosses who are joking and drinking beer. And saying you are networking. Go and ask my bosses at Ministry of Health. I never attended a press soiree once. Or a departure of a country director once. Anytime they call me, Adam, we are going for press soiree. I say, sir, continue. Adam, we are going for, um, Danita, country director is going. So we are doing a send-off party for I say, continue. I don't do parties. My time is short. You've taken eight hours of my day. I should come and add the remaining four hours. And I'll be sitting and I'll be playing songs and drinking things I can't drink. What a waste of time. I said, I won't come. And of course, it's after working hours, so you can't sue me for missing that. I will not come. I feel like be angry. If you do that, we can't take you on workshop. I said, go. Workshop does not take care of me. Ah! People are lobbying to travel, to do monitoring. I don't care. I need hours. I need hours. I'm telling you something. If you don't find the potter's vessel, Tartaria and the guild system, the guild system is the corporate well. It has a way of taking God out of your life. So you realize the way you were hot on campus, since you started working, you are beginning to last. And because of that, you can't last. Yeah. Eh? Your prayer life is not there again. The first day I was going to work, I was presenting my letter to the chief director. You know what I told him? I said, sir, I told the woman, I said, if you ever tell me I can't accept this job, I quit. That's how I was coming to the job. Because I was traveling to Nigeria. And you can't take a leave as a new worker. I said that in my heart. Do you know what they told me? They said, oh, go. We don't have space here. Come. You know, ministries, they can employ you, but you will come the next year. 
I came the next year, March, before I started this office. Because in my mind, I was quitting if they said I can't travel. Nothing will come between me and God, though. Ah! Some of you should come to boldness when they are giving you a new job. Negotiate. No Saturday, no Sunday. Because an Adventist can tell you, I Saturday, I go to church. And the manager will say, okay, we agree. Since we don't come Sunday, day to day, agree. Saturday, Sunday, don't come. And you, Christian, sheepishly, go and say, I have to, I have to comply. It's a lie. My Saturday, my Sunday, if I follow you, I'll never do all night. So no Saturday, no Sunday, sir. They'll be shocked you are looking for a job, but you are bold. Tartaria will not make me bow. Break the potter's vessel. I provoke you today. Stop fearing men. And start working in authority. Work in respect. But don't let any man determine the confines of your spirituality. So that people are speaking profane. And they are joking because it's your boss. You can't tell them. Ah, politely smiling. Sir, sir. I'm not comfortable with your joke. You're not smiling. I'm like, oh, are you? I said, sir. I'm not comfortable with your joke. And they run at the same face. You know, there's a way you can smile. You look psychopathic. Sir, sir. I'm not comfortable with your joke. If I continue, I'll just walk out. And they know. One day they delayed me for a program. I was going to, it's not even a program. I was going to pray on my own on a park. So I've closed five o'clock. Now this boy give me work. 5.30, 6 o'clock, 6.30. Come and see my face. Grah! <laughs> Two directors, Admi and Liga, they entered the office. I heard them because usually if you come to ministries, your, your, your walls are wooden. So I heard them. He said, hey. One said, it looks like our office is not happy. Then the other director said, hey, it looks like he has a program. You are delaying him. I finished my typing. I just put it on the table. I said, sir, please, I'll see you tomorrow. I said, yes, so I said, yes, I'm gone. And they know that they won't call me. If you call me at 8.30, I'll pick. Call me at 4 a.m., I'll pick. Working hours is 8 to 5. I didn't sign a contract. You have not given me a ministry phone that I can pick up. <laughs> Some of you, you worship, you worship, you worship powerless people, excuse me, and you let it affect your Christian life. There's a generation that must stand up. They must stand up. Your boss, your, your lecturer is touching you some way. Hey! No, 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 no. Let him know that you are polite, but that one, hey! Like, flip! They, hey! Say! Say! No, let him know that. And yeah, and say! You see the way my hands is with say! If you try! Some of you don't touch you and you say, oh, sir, please, I don't like that. And he knows that you are weak. Somebody must have a violent spirit. Next time, your hand should be sharpened. I thought you heard this man likes touching people. As soon as he grows you, pow! You see, when thief man, thief, thief man, there's no one to report it to. Because that's a thing, you can't report it. I touch a bottle, he slapped me. It ends there. You will take it cool and you advise yourself. And the next time he jokes, you tell us, say, if you try, this whole office, if you try. And you tell him again, I'm not afraid of the consequences. Because God brought me here. And I've seen you trying on another girl. If you use this against me, you'll hear from me soon. You see how Babylon has held a lot of us. Why we should be bold? We are giving Satan respect. Da, 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 bosh. I remember on campus, you know, secondary school, the boys who were doing effeminate things, then they'll pass their hand around you. Yeah, boys. Rub their hand. You are lying down, rub their hand on your thigh, up to your neck. One day, one did it, I opened my eyes. I slap you, power. I said, if you try. I said, I'll suffer, take it easy. I said, this is not suffer. If you try. No, do you know lesbianism and homosexuality is a spirit? The day you sleep with one, the energy of that spirit is so strong, you become lustful all of a sudden. That's why you don't like it, but when you are slept with, you are attracted because the spirit has been deposited. This is not anti gay, lesbian, anything. I'm preaching. Can I preach my message? I say, there's an anti gay, lesbian law or something. It's not about that. It's a spirit. That's why even people don't like it. All of a sudden, they realize that, prophet, I don't like it, but I'm attracted to women. Something was deposited. And the spirit has calling other women, other men. You like men. It's a spirit. Break it. He will give you the iron rod to break the potter's vessel.
It's time to overcome all that guilt. That here, that's how we do it. No. That's how you do it. I'll not do it like that. No, 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 no. No. And that's why you see, God will not introduce you to a place you are not prepared for. So if you go, you are being compromised. It means you are not prepared. So you entered like a sheep. Next church. So overcoming the lack of first love. Make sure your love is pure. You, you, you receive God's love to the point where you trust him to defend you when things are bad. So you will never lie. I will speak the truth. Even if it looks bad, I will speak the truth so that God will defend me. That's the, that's the love I know God has for me. I've come to a place where because of this, I can suffer Smena. And much more, I can go to the point where to be an overcomer, I've learned how to overcome Balamism. Pantheism and all those plurality of things and, you know, culture correct kind of statements. I'm done. I'm done. Nothing in this world will confuse us. We know our God. We know the God we serve. He's the God of all, the Asian God. Titeria, no trade guild will make me bow to another idol. I will not sacrifice. In fact, it was so serious that they, they, she, will, she will convince them to join. But she was an executive there. So I gave her time to repent. If she will not repent, and all those who followed her to go and worship another idol, and they'll be eating things, sacrificed to them, entering this semi occultic parallel church activities. Something, something, brotherhood, or something like, oh, he said, like but we don't know what we do there sometimes. You, all those things. He said, if they don't repent, they are playing with the spirit of Jezebel. Jesus Christ. Sardis. Sardis is the remnant church. And let me say this before I end with the last three. The last three is going straight forward. I'm going to go straight forward today. Now, what God was doing in these churches was this. Some people were gaining crowns while others were losing it. So this is a Christian life. Eh? Some of you are gaining new grounds. Others are losing grounds. You got to watch where you are. Listen, on that day, me and Mama D, I love her so much. Yeah, I love her. On that day, we will not stand together on judgment. I will do it alone. No husband of yours is worth hell. Put it in there. My husband saying I can't come to church. I can't. Do, you, you, you don't follow that. Oh. No, even if you can't come, make sure you don't miss. There's a wait. No, I'm serious. You see, people will do ah, and people will put you in a corner where you cannot be redeemed. And you can't be angry at them because the point is, you still chose. You still chose. There was still choice in the matter. There was still choice somewhere. It's as if when it is bad, we have the energy to refuse. But when it is good, we, 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 we become, oh, hmm. When it's good, the one that will help you. I, I decided to reverse the equation a long time ago. When I was quitting my job, my boss said, Adam, I told him, say, I'm not going to be here forever. Because they were joking with me one day. I said, I'm not going to be here forever. So you put, don't, they were trying to now let me travel to Japan. I should go and do law. And I said, you won't trap me. Do you know they called me to the chief director's office? And the chief director sat me down and said, Hey, then why don't you want to do law? We are ready to pay for it. Gimpa law or Zenith. I said, I won't go. So one of my directors, who is a lawyer, said to me, he said, a director's meeting. He just said it. I knew he wanted to put me on the spot. But he didn't know this boy is hard. I smile, but I'm hard. He said it in front of all the directors that we wanted them to go and do law, but he says, you won't go. And I was just smiling. I was just looking for somebody to say something. I was just, because the point is, you can say, you're not my mother, you're not my father. I will smile and go. I made sure I left. I left them quite cheap. It's not hard. Because I, I knew from the start, God said, I sent you here. So when he said my work was done, no promotion, no night, because, ah, I won't die here. Whatever God has not sent you that you try to stay there because you're afraid, you will die. Yeah, there's an arrow coming. You might not be prepared for it because you are out of place. He said, a bird out of nest is like a person out of the will of God. You can't shoot a bird in the nest. It's only when it's flying. So it means when you're out of God's will, you're like a bear which is available to any hunter. The will of God is your safest place. Sadis, remnant. He said, this say the things 
The seven spirit says, even the seven stars, I know thy works. You see, everyone is works because your works is positioning you. Verse 2. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain. So he's saying that sadness are the rem- remnant. Re- sadness means remnant, what remains. But he's saying that the remnant, eh, there's a problem with them. What they are doing, their prayer life, their fasting life, their giving life. He said they should be careful to fight the spirit of complacency. Because what they think is there is dying. You see, in the spirit, if it's not appreciating, it's dying. So if your prayer life is not changing levels, it's dying. No, in Christ, it's progress. It's not standing. It's progress. It's only warfare we are asked to stand. But the rest we walk. So you can't stand. If you are standing, it means you are, you are slowing down. You are going back. He said, they don't mount up with wings like eagles. They what? Fly, they run, and they walk. There's no way he said, and stand. Because the moment you stand, it means you have gone back. Something is happening to you. Be careful so that what is left does not die. Today, some people cannot stay in church for three hours. It's hard. Something is dying. But you can be at a movie. You are let. Yeah, I'm serious. Sometimes you know morning you have to pray at 5 a.m. But 1 o'clock you are still watching series. You are ready to watch series and wake up at 6. After prayers have been done. What? Squid Game. It's a new series. I advise you if you're a child of God. Don't play with series. No, 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 no. Even the desire to click it means you are compromised. I'm serious. The fact that the thing called you means you will not be able to overcome it. I left, the, do you know when I left series? One day I was watching Prison Break when I was on campus. That, was, that time when I was on campus, it was season one that came. I watched the whole series in one night. When I was done, the Holy Ghost was just folding his hand. When I was done, it was 6 a.m. And I came to lie in bed. And the Holy Ghost said, let's see what dream you dream. I'm telling you, all the dreams I was dreaming was prison break. And the Holy Ghost said to me, says, Adam, from today, I forbid this action. That was the last time. No, there's a place you come to, you have to suffer. It's not bad, though. Where I work and what I do, I can't fill my head with series. And I'll struggle to remember scriptures. And the day will come, you go like end of year, you couldn't finish the Bible. And God will tell you, look at the hour logs. You watch TV, roamed, a cry. Some of you won't get to heaven. You have kilometers. <laughs> heaven knows you as Johnny Walker. You have hours, you have miles. You have walked, you have trekked a cry. Wait, chi. Unless the car is not moving, you will jump inside. Where will they go? Let's go. <laughs> For I have found thy works perfect. He said, for I have not found thy works perfect before the Lord. It means these people, they are working in complacency. They are confused. They think they are doing well. But God said, you are working. It has not yet hit the mark. But you think it's, it's there. But he says, be careful. It's dying. You think your love is there. But you read, it's dying. The flames are dying. Come on. Next one. Next one. Quickly. I want to finish this. Remember therefore... What thou hast received and heard, hold fast and repent. If thou shalt not watch, it means, you see, watchfulness. These people have become complacent. They allow anything to happen. They have lost their watch. I will come on you like a thief. Now, Sardis had a problem. Sardis was a very powerful city. But the, Philipp, the, the Philistines and the Arabic um, Assyrians, they had arranged themselves upon a mountain and they were watching Sardis, the city of Sardis. And Sardis had an impervious wall. And because of that, the people were watching, studying the wall to see when they can break in. Then one day, one of the soldiers who was watching the wall turned his head in a way and his helmet flipped and went through the wall. So that's where the soldiers on the other side realized that, ah, there's a large crack in this wall. And these people were hiding it. Because the guy descended inside the wall and went down to go and take his helmet and climb out of the wall. So in the night when these people slept, the enemy snuck in. That's why I said, I will come like a thief. Time of film, like, I'll explain why he was using certain descriptions. So he was using the allusion of how Sardis was destroyed. Like how the enemy came in like a thief. They snuck through the crevice in the wall and entered the city whilst they were asleep. And by morning, just like the Trojan horse, <laughs> finish the people. Do you know Trojan horse? Who knows the Trojan horse? Who doesn't know the Trojan horse? Don't raise your hand. Don't raise your hand, please. 
Don't, don't, don't try. Don't try. Please, don't raise your hand. If you don't know Treasure Hall, just keep it to yourself. Google it quickly. Google it. And Google it. Google it. I will come unto you as a thief in the night, and thou shalt not know which hour I shall come upon thee. Next. Verse 4. Thou hast a few names who have not defiled their garments, and they keep their garments white and are worthy. Next. But he that overcome, the same will be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot his name out of the book. Of, I'll touch on this, white raiment and book of life. There are books that will be open. Now, why he says book of life will not be blotted out, I explain why. Some people's name will be blotted out of the book of life. There's the book of the living and book of life, two different kinds of books. I'll touch on the books next week. The books of tears, the book of remembrance, book of life, garments. There are different garments. I'll touch on that. I, I don't want to go there today because... It will, it will delay where I want to get to. Yes. So to overcome here, you must overcome complacency. What you have to overcome as a Christian is complacency. Never measure your spirituality about yesterday. Anytime you are measuring your spirituality from what you did yesterday, you are being complacent. Things are dying. And you are losing your watch. What you used to do yesterday, how you used to preach. One of the things I prayed to God was, Lord, every year, every month, teach me how to preach. Oh, otherwise, I'll be stuck in yesterday. Otherwise, after a year, you go like, ah, I know how prophet will preach. This thing prophet will say, I know where you will go to. Then you realize that you are not saying anything fresh from heaven. Because you are stuck and you are not watching. So the things you have are dying. Next church. Philadelphia. Philadelphia is the only church that God didn't have anything against. But he gave a, a caution. He said, hold fast to what you have. Lest any man takes your crown away. So the overcoming here <laughs> is what? Who can help me? Uh -huh. Open it, no one can shut. Now, if you look at half of Philadelphia, Philadelphia is the church brotherly love. That's the meaning of Philadelphia. These are the people who walk in love. They walk in brotherly love. So it says because they walk in brotherly love, they already have their crown on earth. These people won't get their crown in heaven. They have it here. Anytime you walk in love, your crown has been given to you here. Wave your hands to Jesus, please. Okay. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And he says, take heed. Next one. Go, 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 go. Next verse, eight. Uh-huh. All right, next. They have not denied my name, spoke about very powerful things. They have done, they have not worshipped the enemy. Next. Uh, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I will also keep thee from the hour of temptation, and which shall come upon the earth, so try them that dwell upon the earth. Verse 11. Next. Good. Behold, I come quickly. Hold fast to that which thou hast, that no man takes your crown. So what these people have to do is to ensure everything they are doing in love is kept there. Because the moment they step out of love, they have lost their crown. If they are walking in love, no man will take their, their crown from them. So it means what he's trying to tell you is this. Beloved, Listen. Let me pray this. Can I pray this? Satan will send people your way to provoke you to lose your crown. Take heed. Take heed means be watchful. Watch every opportunity by which you can lose a reward and avoid it. Preempt it. Know that this one, Satan has designed it for me to lose my crown. I will not lose it. Last church. Now this year. Thank you, Holy Spirit. To the angel of the church of the loudest. Notice the description here. For every church, to the angel of the church in Ephesus, in Smyrna, in Tartaria, in Pegasus, in Sardis, in Philadelphia. When he came to Laodicea, he didn't say in, he said of there. It means the Laodiceans own the church. It's not God's church, it's their church. This is what we call the democratic church. This is the church that is governed by people's opinions. We don't like this, so stop. Then the pastor will stop. <laughs> these things say the amen so you notice that Jesus is introducing himself as the word of God because the Alpha and Omega is being threatened here verse 15 look at what he said look at what 15 said I know thy works thou art neither cold nor hot I would that you were cold or hot because when you are cold common sense will tell you for heat these Laodicean people their name is what their problem is Laos de Kaya it means Laos is people. The Kaya is righteousness. So the people's righteousness. It means Laodicea, they walk in self-righteousness. They believe they are good. 
That's why he said to them, that thou thinkest thou art clothed, but you are naked. They, they feel that they have achieved self-approval, self-mark, self-measurement. Thou, thou thinkest you are rich, but you are poor. While Smena was poor and God said you are rich. Laodicea says we are rich, but God said you are poor. They believe that they have done something. This is the church that also is called the people's opinions. They do everything by the people's. It's full, full of intellectual people. Everybody knows what they have to think about God. They tell the pastor what to preach. In fact, this church, if you bring it to modern day church, they vote who should be their pastor. If they don't like the way you're preaching, they'll fire you. It's a, yeah, oh, let me end here. I'm touching some, <laughs> touching some courts. I'm serious. It's a serious thing. No, no. <laughs> he said you are cold. I wish you were cold or hot because you see, the problem with Laodicea is it's a form of godliness that has not the power. That's why they don't realize. You see, when you are cold, you know you need heat. When you are hot, you know you are on fire. But Laodicea, because they are mixing intellectualism and spirituality, they don't realize they are lukewarm. They feel they are okay. They feel they know what they are doing. They know what to say about medicine versus what they do. You have to be wise. Spirituality and you can't be too spiritual. Laodicea is talking. You are taking it too far. Laodicea is talking. Laodicea's greatest problem is they need discernment. Because if you are dealing with a Laodicean pastor or a Laodicean church, if you don't take care, you'll be, you'll be tutored into hell and you'll not realize you're in hell. Look, that's how serious look woman is. It's a serious matter. Yeah. I wonder how many times people even heard what I said. Even people in this room, when I said, Biden, the no, buy the no, be careful, oh, be careful. Some people say, oh, like, oh, you know, Trump is worse. Lack of discernment, this generation. Lack of discernment. When you bring a cow there, we will not know whether it's a spotted cow or a speckled cow. We will not know because we lack discernment to know whether it's black that they have created white or it is white that has been spotted black. We lack it. Now, this one needs it because the moment, let me show you this. Keep next, next, next quickly. Let me end here. So then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out. Now, remember, they had the certain water. I've shared this before. The, uh, the river, you know, the Lycos. And that Lycos was a lukewarm water from, you know, Herapolis and Colossae. Cold water, hot water springs. When they merge like that, the, the, the temperature was interpreted. So when you swallow it, Interpreter said, Oh no, what I say? <laughs> when you swallow it, it's like it makes you feel like vomiting. It's not hot to, 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 to heal your sicknesses, neither is it cold to refresh you. So it makes you rather, the way, as soon as the water fuses like that, it's not drinkable. You rather vomit. So he's not talking of losing your salvation. He's talking about using your use, losing your usefulness for God. God can't use you for anything. If you are neither hot nor cold, you are Adam. God can't do anything with you. It's better you are cold and God said, I'll stay you up. Or you are hot and God said, I'll increase your heat. Next one. Next one. What do you say? Mm. Because thou said I'm rich. So Laodicea, their verdict is not from the Lord. It's from themselves. They feel they are the best. I have need of nothing. Thou knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Because these people, they have evaluated themselves that we are doing well. We are doing good. The way the church looks is so beautiful. So we are well. People are marrying, so we are going far. See cars. Ah, God is blessing us. Laodicea. People's opinions. Everything you measure is on the surface of your eyes. Laodicean spirit. Oh, the, weather, the, word, the wedding was nice, so see money. Laodicea. No, they don't measure glory. They measure aesthetic beauty. It's not glory. They don't weigh, they don't have a, they don't have a capacity to weigh people. So, so for, people will greet me well if they say I can't view it. Laodicea. These people, they don't measure flame. They measure fame. Yeah, so there are some people here. Once you are not famous, no. Yeah, yeah, it's not deep like that. But you like to celebrate an outsider because they have two million followers. And they don't even know you exist. That's loud. No, it's, it's a Laodicean spirit. Very subtle. We celebrate fame instead of flames. People who can quicken fire in you. One people who can validate your carnal thoughts. 
That I can go to a preaching eh, and I'll listen to the people. The people you preach will say, wow, mm, mm. Another pastor will come and preach carnal things and they will say, yes, yes. And you're like, hey, this generation. This generation, he said, John came. Jesus also came. We still didn't agree. So what shall we do to you? See what he said after that. 18. 18, quickly. I will counsel thee to buy of me gold tried by fire. The solution to Laodicea is fire. Next, next, next verse. Be what? 19. Huh? As many I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore. Zealousness is zeal to the boiling point. Bible says in Romans chapter 12, the verse 11. It says, fervent in spirit, seven the Lord. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, seven the Lord. So, Laodicean solution is zeal. Fire. The fire of God to burn you. So, it means you must fight. Can I say this? Laodicea is being controlled by your opinions and your self-worth evaluation. And what deals with you at that place means you are lukewarm. It means at that place, this is a person who thinks he's doing well. Nothing you say will change their mind. Number two, this is the person who is operating with God at their own terms. So when you tell them that you need to pray to access into realms, the person feels that I hear praying Laodicea. They can't agree to the ways of God. They want to do it their way. That's Laodicean spirit. And he said the solution to it is zeal. When the fire burns you, you'll be shocked. What if you'll be praying? I had a problem. I told you, I, I, I was from a Pentecostal background. So you pray, then when you want Holy Ghost baptism, then you say, people fall under power. Powerful. You know the church I'm coming from. Now, what happened was this. So I was not trained with long hour prayer. The moment I finished university, Holy Ghost said to me, hey, second school, Holy Ghost said to me, follow your brother, Pastor Christopher. So he and me went. He was going to Victory Bible Church at that time. So he said, let's go. After second school, after all, one of our vacations was saying, we went, we went, Bishop Taki, boy prayed six hours in tongues. No prayer topic. It changed my prayer life. So in Kian West, I had an opportunity. I did two kinds of prayers. I'll mention the least one. Now, one day I went to pray somewhere. 24 hours I, I, was, I was praying. I prayed I was 24 hours nonstop. It came by reason of me not operating at lukewarmness. Some of you think you have prayed one hour, you are good enough. It's dying. You are like this person saying, I'm rich. I've clocked hours. No. If I tell you the hours you have done, and this is the least of 24 hours, I was on the mountaintop. That time I did 36. That time I did more than 36. Hello. He goes up non-stop. He come back. Knelt down. That 24 hours, I wore my dress. This, like if I wore this dress, I wore it for 72 hours. So I didn't bath like this on the floor. It was done. I didn't even cover myself with cloth. Rolling on the rocks. Till morning. Went into the bush again. I don't say the rest, so I go and let my result go. But I'm saying something to you. The day that zeal came on me, it changed everything. It changed everything. My final year, I had, a, I had a face like John the Baptist. My whole face was grown, bearded. Because I had gone to the bush. Ay, 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 ay. After school, oh my God, didn't need tires. I said, God, give all my people. I used to pray for the God for the rest of the bush. I said, give all of them jobs and let me be in the bush praying. Come and see. Have you, have you, well, on Wednesday and Friday, we'll go to the Elegon Gardens. And, and as you are praying, one, two, three people will join, four people will join, and was increasing. And I was just praying with them. I said, give them jobs and leave me the job of prayer. Zeal. I've not seen zeal before. I know a pastor. He was traveling to uh, Stechima. When he got to say, somewhere like that, he said, please, I'll get down here in the bush. Just carried this mat, entered the bush. We didn't hear from him for one week. A strange bush. Zeal. Someone said, hey. No, no. It is what will destroy lukewarmness. Do you know what I'm telling you? You have been too pampered. That's why you don't realize that this thing you are talking about, you have not hit levels. You are not a pain. You say, prophet, we are, we are not that a big group. We have walked before. When I say walk, Liberty, what year? 
we are here. And I'm daddy, but you are speaking in tongues. And you have not eaten, you are fasting. 2009, I was in a 40 day dry fast. My head was left. I was going to Nigeria. My God, if you see that picture, you laugh at me. I'm gone. Zeal. That is the solution to lukewarmness. And from time to time, you must remember that zeal. From time to time, do what I do. I find a forest in Sakumoro, a golf park or something. I go and sit under the tree. I don't say because I hold my and I'm in AC. The day I do this, look, warmness will start. That's why you can start hot. You see powerful ministers, they start well. All of a sudden, the thing's becoming political. Look, warmness has started. You think, oh, we have the nicest church. Till date, I don't celebrate our numbers. Because if you listen to the way I'm talking, God is giving us a thousand. Do you know when they get to a thousand, I'll tell you that God is giving us two thousand. I will never stop. Zeal does that. I never get satisfied. Someone tells me, prophet, I say, I'm, I still have to be serious. Sometimes you hear me, I say, I have to be serious. Oh. The way people are praying, I have to be serious. Oh. It's, it's zeal. What am I telling you tonight? The solution to overcoming Laodicea is zeal to the boiling point. Today, the zeal of God must baptize you. No level of your spirituality denies you evangelism. That taxi driver is still a soul. What must I overcome? To be an overcomer. I must not lose my first love. Anything fighting my first love, I must hold on. Lord, I receive love from you. I trust you. Lord, what must I do not to lose my first love? I must ensure that I enjoy suffering. I live for joy when I'm wrongly accused. I'm excited. I don't want to defend it. They should continue spoiling my name. I like it. I will not call anybody who has called my name wrongly. And I say, I heard you said this about me. Continue. I will not defend myself because I'm most glad that you are finding me capable of enduring insults. What must I do to be an overcomer? I must overcome Balamism. Merchandise for the gospel. And mixing the deity of Christ with other gospels. Come into the place where I feel that, oh, these are pastors and I'm a lady. I must overcome that spirit. What does that mean? It means I must put myself in the ministry as intense as my pastor. If he's fasting, I'm also fasting. If he's praying, I'm also praying. If he's reading the Bible, I'm also reading the Bible. I'm also it's for pastors. We are all pastors. What must I do to overcome Titeria? No institution or company should have the capacity to bake the life of God out of me. So that now when I started working, my spirituality has gone low. No institution. I've put the candle under a bushel. No institution is worth this. What must I do to overcome in sadness? I must not be complacent. I must make sure I'm always watchful. That the things that I think are there, they don't get lost. Because sometimes you think you are giving, but after a while you realize that you are not giving out of love. The giving is religious. You are even beginning to gradually give. Something is dying. You must be sensitive. What must I do to overcome in Philadelphia? I must make sure nobody takes me out of love. I will walk in love till Jesus comes. I will walk in advanced forgiveness so that nobody takes away my crown. What must I do to overcome Laodicea? Having no self-righteousness of my own. My righteousness is of the Lord. I trust only the Lord, not in any man. I trust only the Lord, not in anything any man shall say to me. Only God is my hope. Only God is my strength. Only God is my power. Only God is my energy. I am zealous for the Lord. Be zealous therefore and repent. And I always measured it. I said, God, I must be able to stay in your presence. Do you know one day God told me something? He said, if you can't stay in my presence for two hours, I'm feeling tired. How can I give you a vision for five hours? You know, sometimes you hear this thing, you are so amazed. But you have to think to yourself, 30 minutes, I'm getting tired. Can I close my eyes to see a vision? I might sleep. It takes spiritual tenacity. When you hear people had 18 hour encounters, it takes a tenacity to hold your spirit intact. You're not afraid. You must measure your spiritual life every year. A father, it's like I'm getting tired easier than I'm struggling to pray. It's not sweet like before. The zeal of his house is waning. 
It's time for it to come up. And if you didn't know, don't think it is self-generated. You must willingly engage. You must willingly engage. Else the zeal you started with, it will retrogress. So Paul said, be slothful, therefore. He said, do not be slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience have obtained their promise. And I showed you from Proverbs that a slothful man will not roast what he has hunted for. You are not lazy, but the speed and velocity you started with, it is reducing. And it has a goal. Next week, when I show you what that goal is, Satan has nothing but one power. The power to delay time. So all he did with Abel was to kill the one that can kill him. That's why I said the seed of the woman bruised the head of the serpent. So they thought it was Abel, so they killed him. So once they kill Abel, they have to wait for another child before that prophecy can be fulfilled in Seth. And when Seth also showed up, God had another plan. And Lucifer realized that, no, it might not be Seth. So they began to go around. Then they realized that now we don't know God's plan again. So what will we do? Let us send angels to sleep with all of man. So once they pollute the gene pool, no one of them can kill us because they are one of us. So everything Satan has been doing since is to delay his judgment. Do you know though you are going to heaven? He has delayed you from fulfilling your overcoming status because as long as you don't overcome, the world is controlling you. And if the world is controlling you, you are not capable of enforcing eternal prophecy. You who are to bruise the head are compromised with the head you are supposed to bruise. So the ones bruising the head are now in company with the head that should be bruised. Satan is smiling. His time is short, so he's delaying God's quorum in the army. That once God does not get the people he's looking for to fight him, let me compromise all of them. So my time is stretching more. Do you know we can short circuit the coming of the Antichrist and all the things that will happen if we all grow and come to the place where we and the Spirit say Maranatha. As long as we don't, we'll be going through certain painful situations because we don't realize all Satan is doing in reducing your prayer life, in stopping your fasting, is delaying the army that will come together with one mind, one purpose, one accord. He's buying time to even steal the elect. But if somebody here will say, Lord, I want to overcome, I'm done with my life. I'm done with how things should go for me. How about how it should go for you? Because if you did not know, Satan has deceived us with this scripture that we know that all things work together for my good. The song even confused us further. All things working for my good is intentional, never failing. It's not correct. Romans 8 does not say all things work together for my good. All things work together for the good of them that are called according to his purpose. So the good that is here is God's good, not your good. Because it's not about us. If you understand this, you will know the marriage is not about you, it's about God. The children is not about you, it's about God. That one to make the faith even increase because you know God needs you to have those children for his glory. You know God needs you to marry for his glory. So it's not about you again. All things work together for his good and his purpose. Lift your right hand. There's an overcomer's creed. And tonight I call you to this place. We shall not all be the same in heaven. But you want to tell God that God I come before you. Here I stand before the God of all the earth just to praise, just to praise. Here I stand before the God of all the earth just to praise, just to praise. Here I stand before the God of all the earth. Who is like you? 
Father, He has called all of us to be overcomers. Whatever will reduce you from missing out on this great privilege, begin to speak to the Almighty. Lord, I will not miss my chance. Lord, I will not miss my designated position that you have called everyone that is born of God to overcome the world. Begin to speak to God. The revelation of the overcomer comes upon me. Speak to the Father right now. Make new commitments to God. I receive the energy from heaven. I will not be compromised under any circumstance. From today, I walk in the strength and the energy of God. I walk in first love. I receive love from the Father. I receive love from the Father. I receive love from the Father. I receive the love from the Father. It is going to be easy to walk in love. It is going to be easy to walk in love. Lord, in the name of Jesus, because of you, because I walk godly in Christ Jesus, I am ready to suffer persecution. I am ready to suffer need. I am ready to suffer discomfort because of the gospel. Lift up your voice and begin to speak to him. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering be made conformable even unto his death. We want to pray in the name of Jesus. From today, we will be joyful. We will live for joy when people reproach us for the gospel. What is it that I need to overcome? Even in the system of Pergamos, we are praying in the name of Jesus. The Father, anything that is Balamism, anything that has made us begin to compromise our sacrifice, our prayer life, anything that has caused us to begin to leave our spiritual exercises, we and pursue money and pursue mammon. We are praying in the name of Jesus by the power of overcoming capacity. We declare we are temperate. We are temperate. We are temperate in all things. Everything that makes us think these are for pastors. These are for members. We break the doctrine of Nicolaitanism. I we lift up our voice and pray again that God, anything in the interior, anything that is burning the life of God from our fellowship time, fellowship time, our prayer time, our spirituality. When we get to the office, we are bowing to the gods there. When we get to the office, we are paying homage to the gods there. When we get to our campuses, when we get to our friends, we are bowing and eating food, sacrificed to idols. From today, we receive the iron rod. We break the potter's vessel, every Babel, every Babylonian system that is designed to shut God in me, to destroy God in me, I pray by the power of the Holy Ghost. We overcome, we overcome, we overcome every Babylonian system. We overcome every Babylonian system. Babylon in the office, Babylon in education, Babylon in our family, Babylon in our marriage. Every worldly idea, every worldly pattern that is destroying our worship and our fellowship with God. A Calibre Compressor Telebe Kappa, a Pastor Patapa, a Pastor Pastor Palata, a Precotti Celebe Kappa. We lift up our voice. Even in sadness, we receive the capacity to overcome complacency, to overcome complacency. Yes, we have prayed before. Yes, we have fasted before. Yes, we have preached before. Yes, we have ministered before. Yes, we have sung before, but anything that is making us think that our past achievements are that which we should glory in. Father, your word said those things are dying. Those things
things are dying. So we have to be watchful. Lord, we watch in honor. We watch in prayerfulness. We watch in our fasting life. We watch in our spirituality. We will not let our spiritual life slip through our hands. We will not walk in a no spirit. A spirit that says, I know already. I know this one already. But we will be like children, ready to learn every day at the feet of Christ. What Messiah overcome, even when it comes to Philadelphia, nothing of the enemy will make me no man, no man, no man, no matter the offense, no matter the action, will make me lose my love, will make me walk out of brotherly love. I am confident, I am capable, I exist superhuman energy and I begin to command that that which I have received as a crown it remains, it remains it remains, it remains no advice, no suggestion no idea will make me lose my crown I pray in the name of Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus. As I enter Laodicea, every self-righteousness, every self-righteousness, an achievement spirit, a spirit that feels that I've done something, I've done something. We are praying by the power of the Holy Ghost with the zeal of God, the zeal of God, zeal to the boiling point, the fire of God is baptizing us. That on that day, nobody here will be ashamed. On that day, no one here will be ashamed. On that day, no one here will be ashamed. We shall have boldness. We shall have boldness. We shall have boldness. We shall have boldness on that day. We shall have boldness on that day. Father, may this generation live on the brink of eternity. Now there's another world coming. That is why the things that are happening shows the end of this world. If there's an end of this world, then surely there must be another that is coming. You said in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the verse 11, these things were written for us as an example unto whom the ends of the world shall come. All that happened in the Bible were written as an example to us, this generation. By whom the end of the world is coming to. We pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, may we not lose sight of the spiritual things. May the main thing remain the main thing. If anyone has strayed, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit. May you be brought back to the main thing. There's a reason you were brought to the earth. There's a reason you are here at such a time. God designed us for the end of this world. Everything about us is designed for what is happening. May you not lose sight and be caught up in the fiasco and the fresco. May we be caught up in the revelation of the truth and the opportunities God presents us. There are so many that started spiritual, but they have become so cunning. They even deny the existence of God. I know people who were once pastors. They are now Islamic clerics. Because they took lightly the things you are hearing. Do you know the seven churches of Asia all became Islamic states? Because if you take for granted such a great salvation, it can be taken away. And you will realize when it's too late. That, ah, I was enlisted in an army and I did not realize what it took me. He said, for this cause, I beat my body after I have preached, I myself will not be a castaway. Because if I have to be temperate, sir, it means I can't do what everybody does. No matter how nice and convenient, I can't. I can't be angry like everybody. I can't keep malice like everybody. I can't react when I'm insulted like everybody. Because there's coming another city. Father, I pray for your people. 
just to just keep. The day must come where time will stop. Time must be frozen. You have nowhere to go, it will pass by. And you alone will be the glorious king when we celebrate. Jesus mighty name. All of you be seated. Amen. If you have your offering, lift it up to heaven. God willing, next week um, we are ending this chapter and God willing we'll be beginning the sword of the spirit then on the 18th of November we are starting a 31 day fasting. I'm not calling, I'm, October I've been quiet. Or you fasted something? Is it fasting in October? We have not fasted in October. No, we are not going to fast. I'm giving freedom. It's November 18th. We are going on a 31 day fast up to the 10th of December. And so, please don't say it's your birthday, so Prophet, move it back. Me too, my anniversary is there. 3rd December is my anniversary. I'll be fasting. We'll have all night on that day. 10th of December, we're having all night. We are climaxing at all night. So, don't miss these things for anything. And God himself is going to glorify himself in this stage of our life. Amen? Oh, I said amen. I, I think there are people here don't want to respond. Online people, I said amen. I greet all of you online. Yeah. The way you are responding is like you're also online. Amen. By this time, you see, your life, they also know me from ATTC. We used to have services up to 9.30, 10. Yeah. Yasmin is here. Yasmin. Yeah, she came for an all night. There were no chairs. You, you put your pamper though. We have done all night without chairs for eight, ten hours. And then, yeah, she was sharing with the Nigerian pastors. And they even reminded me, I realized, at those days when we come, 10 o'clock, 10 to what? 5, 6 a.m. Sometimes 8 o'clock, we are still at all night. Standing. I'm telling you, standing on no chair. And those days when we are praying, we call it suspended biological. Activity. You don't wee wee any high. This one, every time you have been crack, 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 like your, your, this thing is water. No, 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 no. Those days, we suspend biological activity. You don't wee wee, you don't use washroom. Eight hours. I command it. And then, but no one goes to washroom. I like, oh, we'll be there uh, eight, till morning. And this one that I've preached, and now we are doing like, ah, prophet, please. It, may you overcome. Your own overcome tiredness. Yeah. Because do you know the shocking thing, Ruth? When we close, don't go home. They will talk to 11. And those who also go home, they are either going to another meeting somewhere or they are going to chat till 1 a.m. It's only here that you begin to feel like you are going to work tomorrow. Even when you go home, you won't sleep. You can watch series. Some of you will talk to some boys till 12. You can sacrifice your time. May the Lord show you what you are missing. Overcome, overcome, overcome. Where's Mama D? Where, where's my wife? Where is she? Hey, ask her. Just as long as we're dating, I can tell 11 o'clock my phone is going off. I'm like, my own phone will be off from 11 to 9 a.m. My, my beloved, I'm not talking to you. I'm praying. I quench my phone. I'm praying. No, you won't be the reason why I lose my fire. And so because I'm dating, I'll lose my anointing. No. 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 It's too important. No, no. Make up a trouble. Generation, sometimes I wish I can put something inside you. Anyways, lift up your hands to heaven. So next week I'm entering with the heavenly civilization. I want to start at four o'clock, please. Next week I want to start early. So please, if you are coming, come early. Bring a friend. I want to start at four o'clock exactly. Today I had an emergency, so I couldn't come at four. But I want to start at four o'clock exactly, so that I can because I'm preaching also a diary of worshiper. Yes, next week is Diary of Worship of Pastor Isaiah at Fountain of Glory here. Uh -huh. So I'm preaching also over there. So uh, those who want to also go with us, you can go. So obviously, when I start, ta -ta -ta, I'm going. I'll teach you about the four commodities we are trading in life and how heaven will look like. Animals, marriage, how the dead will be like, whether you meet the dead dead. All those things I'll preach about. So that your heart will be at peace. You will know how heaven looks like. That's the day when you lose a loved one. Once they are born again, you never cry again. Because you know, ah, you met him. You are celebrating papa. Yes. Lift your offering to heaven. Say, Father, as I sow this seed, let your glory, let your presence, let your power fill 
my life. In Jesus' precious mighty name, I declare so. Amen. Let the offering baskets go around. Can we get a communion quickly? So we leave this place and we do it. We apologize dearly for service. Um, the reason why it was compressed is because there's not like faith, it's not like hope where I can teach an aspect and leave it. There are seven churches. I have to touch all. That's why I had to compress it. I would have ended around the fourth church, but I won't touch this probably till next year. So please go and listen to this. If you heard it, listen to me. God is telling you something. Some of you are going to be threatened to lose your job. People in America are losing their job because they stand for God. Don't be afraid of what is coming. Trust him. And he'll glorify his name. And anyways, in Africa too, I heard just like driver's license. Let me end here. Anyway, let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people got it. These people are in church. You are back in the house. Touch your hands. This is the trapeza. The Bible says when we take it, presenting the Lord's body, God releases his life, his power, and his glory upon us. We declare that even as people have received testimony saying that they withdrew from this bank, finances, healing, deliverance from menstruation problems, fibroid vanishing, boobs vanishing, all sorts of things, we pray over this again, Father, and we declare it energized with your power. That whoever takes this communion today, whatever is wrong in their body, we command your power flows through them in the name of Jesus. And your life brings testimony to everyone that takes this communion. Even those online, I pray over your communion. I declare everything you are taking online. I command it to turn to God's power and let God's glory flood your life. Even in Jesus' precious mighty name, amen. Lift it up to heaven as you take it in Revelation. you have designed for their realization come upon them mightily. For 
wherever there is weakness, Lord, today I declare your presence makes them strong. Wherever there is disease, I declare from today your capacity makes them whole. Wherever there is destruction, I declare your capacity makes there be a proper rebuilding. I release your strength over your people. Whoever is tired in this room, receive the strength of God. Whoever is weak in this room, receive the strength of God. I pray for you from today. May the Lord be closer to you than your very self. May you see that the Lord is ever present with you. And in any situation, every circumstance, you have the upper hand and nothing has the capacity to destroy the work of God in your life. You are blessed by all means. Go conquering and to conquer. Go conquering and to conquer. Go conquering and to conquer. Father, I line up the lanes of Ghana. Every road, every entrance into Ghana. I pray the Lord, every activity of darkness, let it be exposed this week. Ah, I see something. We come against every attack in the spirit against this nation. From this month onwards to November, every attack against the nation. We pray for the parliament. May I see something like a black cloth. Lord, we come against every death attack against parliament. Ah. I keep seeing something like pineapples. Pineapples. When I close my eyes, I see pineapples and the pineapples are being thrown like they are getting rotten. Father, everything. Hey, hey, hey. Can you speak in tongues for one minute? You don't need to know, but just speak in tongues. I'll show you something. Look at back at Tosi Yatapadas. If you're online, pray. Prakotelemesi Atoleme Shapa. Prakaton Delezi Teleme Kapa. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, I come against any farming entering Ghana. I saw food shortage. I just saw it. Because I asked God, what is this pineapple thing? He says, that thing you are seeing that has been toppled over. And it's rotting. He said, it's not that there's no food. There's, a, there's, a, there's an agenda. Can I say this online? It's like, in Ghana, a cartel wants to take over our food business. A group of people want to control when tomatoes price will be what it is. And I heard God say they are trying to create shortage in the system. I come against that plan in Jesus. Take my word seriously. I just saw something like famine entering the system. A shortage of food everywhere. It will not happen. Father, it will not happen. Father, it will not happen. Whatever enemy plan they have thrown to make there be shortage of food, price hikes, inconsiderable escalation we prophesied that we saw this thing dollar becoming 6.3 there about. Father, we come against that agenda of any kind of price hike because of this famine agenda. Let your name be glorified in this place. Holy Spirit, your people are blessed. You have the upper hand. May you operate with the Holy Ghost. Everything you do, have the upper hand. I say, have the upper hand. And never fail in the name of Jesus. Wherever you go, your word is final. I said, whatever you go, your word is fine now. I release the capacity to speak. I release the ability to speak. Even when you forget yourself, may the Lord put the right words in your mouth. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. Go celebrating. Be excited in him. Shalom, shalom. Amen.